Well, let's check the audio here. See what we got. All righty. The green curtain. <laughs> yeah, guys, I figured I'd get on a little early with you guys. Eh, about 10 minutes earlier. Why not, right? Well, that's a little off. Change that mic. Setting to right around my 80 spot there. Um, you guys should hear me okay or now, right? Let me see. Testing one, two. Testing one, two. We are good. Good evening to everyone. Frank Kama. Renee, what's happening? Yeah, I got to clean that camera lens off. It was like, I can see like a little tiny spot on there. I was like, okay, let's get that taken care of real quick too. Uh, yeah, Renee, you were the first one to jump in there. Hey, lovely humans. Val, what's going on? Good to see you in there. Rick Rocker Graham. Hi, Chris. Good to be back. Oh, yeah. Hi, Chris. Hello. How are you? Photography, light and magic. I'm doing fine, man. I hope you're doing good as well. Uh, I have VTech a lot. Ah, oh, VTech. Sweet. Hello. What's going on? Hey, to Weekend Hangout. Uh, cop. Hello, Chris. What's going on? Good to see you in there. Truth Warrior has, <laughs> has come online. Yes. Keeping it real. Yeah, Windex goes a long way, Renee. You're right about that. What's going on there, uh, Pete's Vlog? Player, what's happening? Yeah, I thought something was wrong with this uh, mic at first. Uh, this is long before I got on here. I went to go uh, check it, and I was like, well, how come I have no, I have no audio on this thing? And I checked on the buttons here. I had it like a mute on it. I said, all right. Somehow I hit that button. Not good. Ah. Uh, Mike Hoover, what's going on? I said, what's up, Chris? Just got back from vacation, tuna fishing, North Carolina, Outer Banks. Sweet. You know, uh, back in, it was the mid, I was down in, yeah, it was right around mid 80s, 85. I was down there in South Carolina, not North. Uh, I was living uh, about two blocks away from uh, Myrtle Beach, or in Myrtle Beach, rather, I'm sorry. And uh, if you're familiar with that, which you may not be, but if you are, uh, they had all these under 21 clubs like Xanadu's, Mother Fletcher's, all these kind of stuff like that. Um, and they had it on the, they had the pavilion and all that stuff. Uh, and anybody else who's been to South Carolina, they know what I'm talking about. Of course, it has grown quite a bit since then. So I don't know if any of these things are still there, but I think there was two. Wasn't there like a pair 11, I think it was, um, where you can literally get seafood as a good restaurant. And if you kept going past the, um, the actual restaurant, I went past that, had a long dock after you can just shop, you know, you can fish right up there, catch shark and all kinds of other stuff. Pretty cool. Uh, let's see. Eddie the Eagle has landed. Hello, Chris. Old buddy. What's happening? Good to see you in there, Eddie. Let's see. Test, test, test. One, two, three. Oh, yeah. I'm going to make sure she's working. Loud and clear. Thugspiracy TV. Oh, I'll have to check it out. You said hi. I have a good clip for you to check. Keep up the good work. Uh, yeah, I'll have to uh, go on your channel and, and uh, hit you up. See what you got there, right? Douglas Gardner, perfect out uh, here in Arizona. Sweet. Hold on. This thing just jumped up on me. Sorry about that if I got that location wrong. <laughs> you guys are like, boom. Uh, Storm Loch Ness Monster Dinosaur, September 21st. Huh. Phil Smith. Hi, Chris. What's going on, Phil? Hello again from New Hampshire is in the house. Dennis, what's happening? Antonio Vera, you said loud and clear, buddy. Sweet. I got these mics, man. These are, these are awesome. Um, in fact, a buddy of mine from the UK says, man, you sound BBC quality. Uh, pretty funny. Um, but that's a compliment because, you know, you listen to BBC and stuff like that, The uh, whether it be, you know, the TV or radio, it's actually crystal clear. It sounds pretty good. So definitely a good compliment. Uh... Well, have a patch on one eye. I can't see. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Shep, you put on, hey, Chris. Uh, cheers, chat. Um, hope everyone is doing well. Have a patch on one eye and can't see crap. Uh, LOL, uh, gonna listen, peace all. Hey, no problem, man. Just sit back, chill out. Um, hope everything goes good for you there, right? Heals good and everything else. I assume you had some kind of operation or something. Uh, and I'm trying to remember if you had said that last time. Um, Darren Walker, hi, Chris from the UK. What's going on, Darren? Good to see you in there. Pete's vlog, you're at work right now. Sweet. Well, maybe, maybe not, depending if you got to chill, uh, chill, uh, you know, get the chill axe a little bit there at the job. And uh, a buddy of mine does that. He's a security guard for this uh, uh, this Toyota plant out here. And, yeah, he just sits back and just 
<laughs> watches videos and all kinds of stuff. It's pretty crazy. Uh, let's see. What's new on Mars? Uh, actually, I got a video coming out. Uh, uh, in fact, it should have been out Friday, guys. So my apologies. Uh, I wanted to get this video out uh, Friday. Um, it's actually not this weekend here, but last weekend, um, my coworker, his mom had uh, passed away. And um, they were taking it pretty hard. He was real close with her and everything else. And and so was the rest of his family as well. And uh, so I ended up going to the wake and funeral on Friday. So, you know, that didn't allow me to get the video out. But uh, I do have it. Um, it's it's actually just been edited and will go up tomorrow. So you guys can check it out. And, uh, and it's basically about Mount Shop. I've always talked about Mount Shop and how the very base of it, they're actually checking out more than just, uh, you know, looking for microbial life, right? So... Um, you know, and all of these things, they say that they're buttes, but yet they're all lined up in the row, like, like a used car lot. They're all lined up on, in a row like this here. And then you've got these other buildings and structures all in the back. So, um, at least that's the way it, it looks like they want you to, you know, think that it's like, you know, buttes and just m mountains and stuff. But wait until you see the next video, you're going to be like, mm, yeah, I don't think that's a mountain at all. In fact, they find several things in there and one I almost passed. Um, I actually had a problem with the uh, Photoshop. It, it just kind of shut down on me and I lost all my work, which I'm kind of glad it did because once I did that, I was able to find a couple other things that I wasn't aware of until I just, oh my God, I can't believe I didn't see that. So you guys will see that, uh, probably be out tomorrow. So look for that. It'll probably be closer to early evening or mid evening. So, you know, just check it out. Phil Smith, uh, you asked, um, I mean, me, me, did you get the Mars pick I sent you? Um, you know, I got to ask, is it, it, was it on Facebook or was it on, um, uh, my, uh, did you send it to my email? The Mars anomalies at AOL.com. Um, uh, just, uh, let me know. Cause I might not have gone to the AOL and sometimes I don't get to Facebook right away either. It's been a crazy week. Like I said, so my coworker hasn't been there. So I'm basically taking the work for two of us. So yeah, busy, busy. Oh, uh, where can I open an <laughs> intergalaxy restaurant? That's a great question. Pluto? Uh, that's a start. It's almost at the end, right? Uh, although scientists say that there's actually more planets now in our solar system than previously thought. So, hmm, you might have to go a whole lot farther out. All is cool here in the UK. Sweet. Fish Tropic. Thumbs up, brother. Ah, uh, Paul McCoon. Hi, Chris. Did you see the real Jimmy Roberts' latest UFO picks? Amazing. Yes. Again, he does great work, and I, I love the work that he's doing. Um, and like I said, he just shoots it, you know, right from the hip and just tells it like it is. And I'm kind of the same way. I just believe, look, this is, I believe, like I said, most of the things on Mars that we see is like this, you know, intelligently made stuff. It's not just natural landscape, right? Um, and he, I even say it in the video that, you know, I'll, you know, I'll say it right to the grave that what we are seeing are actually intelli intelligently made structures. If I can get that out. Um, so yeah. And like I said, I'll take it to the grave. That's exactly what I believe. And that's judging by the photos. It's not obviously not hearsay. Right. So yeah. Uh, Renee Rene Cruz, you put my, my vacation. I'm going to do this every single time I get on this thing. I got to actually, Make these uh, comments bigger. Always smaller for some reason. Screen's huge, but the, the, the comment section is like this little narrow area, you know. Um, my vacation in the uh, future is Roswell UFO Museum, little alien. Uh, area 51 extraterrestrial alien tourist uh, visiting center, High, Highland Scotland in Quizan, Manila, Philippines. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I've actually had a chance to go there, but I haven't gone yet. Uh, me and a buddy of mine are going to go and check that out. It's pretty sweet. Uh, at least it looks that way. Uh, he's been there more than once. He says it's crazy. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, Graham uh, Coward, uh, I think your channel is uh, Ace from G3B16. <laughs> okay. Hello, Mars. Oh, man, I am sorry to hear that. Uh, yeah, Philip, you know, these things happen, and it's a shame. You know, you know the guy's a straight-up stand-up guy, and... Um, uh, even, you know, just things, families destroyed and everything else. And I can understand that, you know, uh, when you get a tight knit family and stuff like that goes back, it's crazy. Uh, great video from you during the week going. Yeah, James, you know, I, I don't know. I was going to ask you guys, what do you uh, think about my last video? Um, you know, whether it is some kind of weird 
stone structure head or something along them lines, it clearly does not look just natural, right? And it looks like a debris field. A lot of you guys weighed in and said, hey, Chris, believe it or not, there's a lot more crazy things in there. And again, I'm glad that you guys are doing this because you've, you know, you're literally going to Photoshop, brightening up these photos, exposing more of this stuff. And again, kudos to you guys. That's what it's all about. Find and get your eyes and your hands into these things. And, you know, and you, you know what I mean? Basically, you come to your own conclusion. So, yeah. James uh, Cragen, I think it is. Forgive me if I spell, uh, mispronounced that rather. Hi, Chris. Sorry to hear about the your worker's loss. This is James Craig's. Okay. That's what, see, that's what confused me. I'm going, wait a minute. I was going to say Craig. No, that's not right. <laughs> but it is. Uh, this is uh, James Craig's. Uh, here, just checking in with you. Uh, looking forward to the talk. Sweet. Good to have you in there, James. As usual. God extra. What did you put on there? God extraterrestrial aliens and UFOs. Woo, woo, woo. Baby in the house. <laughs> Best part of Sunday evening, getting in there. How's it going, Chris? Hope you're a good man. WTF is that? Well, I enjoy this, guys. I, I look forward to it. In fact, and I want to say this more than once, just so you guys know, we're going to actually change this because a lot of you guys have said that you guys in the UK and even more east of that, uh, some of you guys are from New Zealand, Australia, I want to push it back. Not that it's going to help some of you guys in Australia because it's the next day for you guys, right? But people in the UK are like five, six hours, depending on daylight savings and all this other good stuff. Um, I'm going to change this now. It's going to be five o'clock. So write it down, a notation, five o'clock for now on in this live stream. So this way it helps out the, my friends over across the big pond. So, uh, you know, just make a to notation of that. Um, let me see. Oh, Renee, just give them time. They'll be there. Uh, Aditya Tata, you put on the Amor uh, Moon videos from old photos, since old photos are less uh, doctored. Um, believe it or not, they're doctored, but just in a whole different way, right? And they're easy. Some of them are really easy to, I'm going to use the term break into. Uh, it's more of enhancing and bringing the anomalies out. Uh, yeah, there's more of those coming too, definitely. Uh, Pete's Vlogs, I'm going to Area 51 in my new car, September 21st. Awesome. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that. Try not to break into the place, though, man. Don't do it. <laughs> not good. We'd like to see you on the uh, next live feed. So, yeah, don't do that. Antonio Vera, I, I need to send you a video I took in Los Angeles, and you can see a huge object uh, going across the moon. Yeah, yeah, send it to me, uh, marsanomalies at aol.com. Uh, I'd be interested to see it myself. Yeah, man, there's a lot more on that. Okay, sweet, uh, James. Love the show, Chris. Thanks. Nick Mad. Nick is in the house. What's going on, man? Mm. Oh, this thing just jumped up on me again, so guys, forgive me. I'm going to try to get everybody if I can. Uh, I already hit the like button, Renee Von Oosterhart says. Sweet. Appreciate it there, Renee. What's up, Chris? How is it going? Daniel is in the house. What's, up? What's going on there, uh, Daniel Webster? what i love man all the good guys come right back and bam you know what i mean it's like uh just sitting at the round table having a discussion everybody talks amongst themselves as well this is the this is the way a community should be uh about to go 4k can't wait uh to do new photo analysis with you on it uh game changer sweet look forward to it mike go ahead and i don't know why that said uh i said basically i had to you know it has, it has to be reviewed it's not like you said anything wrong um, just in time. Hello, Chris in chat. It's 2 a.m. here. Stel Geron, Geron, you know, forgive me if I mispronounce that. Um, well, see, this is the reason why I'm going to move it, uh, Stel. I'm going to actually move this, uh, to 5 uh, p.m. Eastern time here. So make a notation of that. It'll help you guys over there to be, it'll be a little early for you guys. I, I know, it, you know, if it's like me, I, it was, um, I would watch, uh, in, or listen to rather, uh, the other side of midnight show it's on, usually comes on, I think it's either, between twelve, it was twelve. Between twelve and two o'clock, I think it was at one point. So, depending on, because they moved it a couple of times, they went to a different radio stations that would support the show, so on and so forth. They were doing some bouncing around at one point, and so I don't recall now because it's been a while. It's been at least a few years since I've been on with them, and uh, I mean, I'd stay up, man. It'd be like, you know, two, three o'clock in the morning. I'm like, oh my god, I gotta get up the next morning. So, love the show. Don't get me wrong, but it's uh, you. You definitely pay for it the next day, there, right? 
Continuing from uh, Mark Lewis. Hi, Chris. I just got here from Wales, UK. Love the time to spend with you. Appreciate you being here, Mark. Always a pleasure. Uh, uh, no, I did not. Uh, Aditya Tata. No, I, he said uh, you asked, did I start at five today? Did I come late? Also, uh, Mr. Beast is invading Area 51 on the 30th of September. Well, they can try if they like. I don't know if I'd suggest that. But uh, no, and like I said, next Hangout or you know live feed will be at 5 p.m. Uh, so guys, like I said, make a notation of that. Um, you know, this way here, nobody's not going to be a mix up and going, oh, yeah, I'll just wait until 7. Oh, crap, it's long over. Um, or catch the tail end of it, right? Uh, James uh, Cragen or... Um, Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Chris, man, I'm just clearing something up. My name is James uh, Craigan, but my email account name was James. Okay. On it. Sorry for the mix up. Call me whatever you want. Just don't call you late for supper. <laughs> Mike Hoover, you said, well, let's see. Again, I don't know why this is doing this. Uh, you, you put on there, hit that like button, everyone. Chris deserves it. We're waking people up. Well, we are. Like I said, this time's where you guys have shown me things. Hey, Chris, here's a link. Check this out. Uh, some things I haven't seen or heard of before. Uh, again, it's a learning curve for all of us, right? Dave Bins, David Bins, rather. Hi, Chris. At last, made a live uh, chat on holiday, but worth uh, catching you, Dave from the UK. Well, I appreciate it, Dave. Uh, even being on holiday, I appreciate that. Uh, I always have a problem with... Uh, Pronouncing your last name. Uh, Michael, you put on the You're Awesome Chris. Love the, love the show. Well, I appreciate you being here, man, and saying hello. Um, Daniel Webster, you put on the, that uh, stair cue video. Really fascinates me. I know uh, you don't like to do statues, but it seems like Mars has busted up statues all over the place. Most are busted up, but not all. Well, you're right about that. Like I said, uh, Joe, my buddy Joe from uh, Art Alien TV, he always has a ton of these things. So is it possible there's an area of Mars that was just like here on Earth, right? We have the uh, ancient civilizations, you know, whether it be monoliths, you know, uh, pyramids, uh, so on and so forth, right? Is it possible he had that kind of area too, meaning, you know, ancient stuff? And then, of course, they had more modern stuff. I think it's a good possibility. What do you guys think? Hello from the Azores. Love your channel. Thank you, Rolando Alves. Good to see you guys in there. Renee Van Oster Osterhort. I always get my tongue gets tied on that. 5 p.m. Thanks, Chris. We respect you. Well, like I said, I mean, I just, like I said, if I, I try to watch a favorite show of mine, it's late. It sucks, man, that it's late. But like I said, I pay the price the next day, man. So I can understand where you guys are coming from. I don't know. Okay, I have to go. Break is over, but you're the best. Uh, like how you tear things down. Well, you have a good rest of the evening. I guess you're working, so have a good rest of the evening, and uh, we'll talk to you soon, there, uh, Antonio. Uh, I'll try not to miss any of the uh, any of them, so I can listen to your wisdom and other people's. Daniel and said that. Um. Well, see, I like that. This is what I like, though. This, you know, there's good. You know, uh, positive feedback is sometimes is negative. You know, in other words, people don't always see it all. So I'm going to read this, which I don't have to. Uh, Tree Smoker said, hey, I was trying to tell my pops about the Mars and Moon thing. He basically said you're full of crap about both the pitches. Also, he claimed they were rocks. Sorry, dude. Don't be sorry. That's the way he sees it. Um, that's the way I look at it. Uh, I don't share his sentiments, of course. Um, you know, but everybody's allowed to have their own, you know, opinions. Um to me, it depends on what video he's talking about, too. I don't know if he's talking about the very last one I just did about the uh, stone structure head or whatever it was. Now, like I said, I'm not sure what that was, but the way it's, you know, uh, the way it's formed, we'll use the term. If it's natural, the way it's formed, it's awfully unnatural to me. Now, other people, again, have said they've seen all kinds of these weird, crazy things that look like busted up, uh, intelligently made objects, right? So I'm not the only one saying this. So, you know, like I said, everybody's entitled to their opinion. I respect that. Um, Prolin, 1972, J-A-K or Jack, I guess it's it is. Uh, hey, Chris, and Andres from Sweden here. Love your work. 1 a.m. here. Well, I appreciate you stopping in, man. Uh, like I said, see, again, you get, you're at 1 a.m. So if you backed up another couple extra hours, it'd be only 11 for you. So it would probably help you out, right? 
What's up? What's up, Hatchet Man? Good to see you in there, brother. Hey, Chris, good to see you. Uh, you smashed that like button. Cheers. Ar -har. I'm not even sure how you pronounce your name. I, you know, I hate to botch the thing up on you. Um, Blue Utopia, hey, what's going on? Good to see you in there. Uh, warmest temperature here in France ever recorded. Pole shifting and climate change all over the news. Well, that's what they're saying now. I don't know if you guys caught that not too long ago. I think it was, might have been two, three days ago during the week. They said about the pole shifting. It's starting to see the pole shift now, right? And, of course, they say it will take quite some time. I don't know if you guys ever seen the uh, movie Day After Tomorrow, but how that thing literally like accelerated itself and it it literally, you know, uh, changed within hours, right? And had all kinds of mega storms and everything else. But um, I don't foresee that happening. But I all but I do see the the pole change and the pole shift, and they're seeing that themselves. Um, in addition to that, a lot of people believe climate change is trash. I don't. Um, I believe that. I would say, I'd say eighty percent of it is natural. Um, every planet in the solar system is actually getting warmer as we speak, including Mars. This is the reason why if you go on there, put on there, just type in Google, just Google it, put, um, how can I say it? Um, Mars, how do they say it last time? Oh man. Uh, coming out of ice age. Um, it was actually saying, so think about this coming out of ice age. Well, we're warming up. They're coming out of an ice age. Well, when I say they meaning the planet. Um, so what's that tell you? It's warming up guys. And this happens every 11 years. There's a cycle to the to the sun. And like I said before, anybody who's been into radio, whether it be ham radio or CB, they know on the very peak cycle, on the very peak of the 11th uh, year cycle, it's like insane. You can't even barely talk on the radio if you're talking to a friend of yours uh, a couple miles away or 10, 20 miles away, whatever it may be. Um, a buddy of mine and I used to talk a lot. Um, he'd have a six element beam vertical and uh, he would be talking from Rhode Island to Maine. And uh, I would talk to a buddy of mine from, you know, Rhode Island to Massachusetts. He's on his way to work. So, uh, but I'll tell you what, the skip comes in, forget about it. You're not talking to anybody unless you're on a channel way below 40 or way above, whatever. Uh, that's the only way you were talking. But yeah, every 11 years, um, you know, you have that cycle going on. So, and I'm trying to remember if the cycle is actually on its uptick right now. And if it is, this is the reason why I'm warming up, guys. But then it'll start to cool again and go, it's just a cycle. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and I believe a lot of it now, in addition, it's not just natural. It's also uh, ourselves contributing it. Why? you got the acceleration of the, the polar caps, right? The reason for that is you got this carbon in the air, right? This stuff settles onto the ice. It's black. What does black do? It absorbs sun, heat. So now it further accelerates it. So it's a combination of both. Uh, you know, a lot of people, oh, you know, you know, climate change is a crock. In a sense, it is. But in other words, I don't believe that we are the whole sole cause of it. That's what I'm saying. So, you know, what do you guys think of that? Um, you got you guys. I'm sure you guys got your own ideas. If if you think it's false, uh, if you agree or not, whatever, you know. Yeah, I saw that, uh, Aditya. In fact, I was going to cover that. I got it here on. See if I can find it. I probably won't. Um, let me see if I can find this thing now. All right. And I've got this right here. It says hordes of Earth's toughest creatures may now be living on the moon. And in fact, um, see if I can find this because I wrote his name down. Uh, uh, Richard Mortimer actually sent that to me and said, uh, and said, uh, see if I can move this here. I'll get this on the other screen. So uh, let me see here. And basically, the, yeah, the um, tardigrades, I guess. Grotties, call them what you will. Um, but anyway, yeah, so they basically crashed this capsule, this rocket, basically, onto the moon. Um, and these creatures are literally living on it. Uh, they felt that a lot of them probably died, but they're the most hardiest creatures we have. Um, and this is what's really interesting. They're trying to figure out if these things can survive from, I think it's like, what was it, 185 degrees below Celsius on the moon up to, I forget what it was. I don't want to give you guys the wrong information here. Um, okay. Also known as water bears or moss piglets, uh, tardigrades can live on in water or on land and are capable of surviving temperatures as high as 150 degrees Celsius or 320 degrees Fahrenheit and as low as minus 272 Celsius, 458 Fahrenheit, albeit for a few minutes. Pretty good, huh? These creatures are insane. But what they do is they literally expel the water from their bodies and shrivel up into a ball what they're trying to do is because they, they have found more water on uh, uh, the moon, uh, they're trying to see if these things will actually, you know, actually suck up some of this water and, of course, keep thriving and so on and so forth. So what do you guys think of that?
pretty cool stuff. And I can give you guys that page if you guys are interested. I'll go ahead and drop it down below. And this is from fizz.org. And this is going to jump up on me once I do this. So I'm going to try to get back to you guys as far as that. Um, yeah, so yeah, you, you asked, what's your opinion on Israel uh, Israeli moon mission contaminating the moon with the... I, you know what? I think this is the thing. I think they're going to actually try to see how they they live there on the moon. And guess what? If they know they can do it on the moon, they can definitely do it on Mars because there is an atmosphere. Think about that. So it's like they're doing this as a test bed kind of thing, the moon itself, and they want to see if these things can survive on it. Now, if they can live there again, where there's no atmosphere, according to you know NASA and JPL and all these other countries, then clearly they can do it on Mars, and it's not quite the temperature swing there. I mean, it gets harsh there too, but you know what I'm saying, right? So I'm curious, that's the reason why they're doing it. It's not just to see if those things will survive on the moon, but also Mars. And if that's true, they can see like a, how a lot of life forms would actually be able to live uh, on another planet, right? That might be kind of that weird pendulum swing from real, real low temperatures to real, real high, right? Pete's vlog. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the uh, contribution there. I uh, got it, Chris. I definitely want to, I won't pass the line. I just stargaze for UFOs at Area 51. Thanks. Yeah. Well, like I said, I mean, a lot of the people are claiming that they're going to jump over to, um, um, what do you call it? They're going to go to Area 51 and they're you know, going to try to break in and all this other crap. Um, I'd be there just chilling, just doing a, you know, just doing a tailgate party, just chilling with my friend. Right. Um, Again, man, thanks for the support. Yeah, I don't want to see anything happen to anybody. Uh, <laughs> see anything. One of my good friends. Oh, by the way, he was locked up. Oh, well, any good. Creatures on our moon. Yes, Mike, absolutely. Uh, I dropped the link down there. Um, I think it just it's just above your Yeah, it's right right there above your head there I put on there. Um, and that's, uh, like I said, that's from fizz.org or, you know, uh, let me see if it says anything else here. No, that's pretty much it. But uh, good page, uh, legit stuff. Here's a question. What a technology do you think we have invented that have been kept uh, back from us? Um, I don't know. Uh, that's a great question, man. I think they have had, um, you know, anything from different uh, engines, you know, for capsules, stuff like that. Uh, ion drive, uh, plasma drives, uh, stuff like that. I mean, they're starting to come out now. In fact, they talked about the ion drive and uh, what Woodcraft was that. Guys, help me out on this. It was um, one of the ones they sent. It's going through the solar system right now, our solar system, of course. And I'm trying to remember if it's going towards the end of the solar system or what, but they actually, it's one of the, it's an ion driven uh, engine that's propelling this craft. And uh, so, yeah. And a buddy of mine told me that X, X amount of years ago. He said, I said, let me ask you a question. Are they working on plasma ion? He says, he just didn't say anything. He just kind of shook his head, just just looking to ion drive. I went, okay, that's all he said. Um, so there you go. And this was long before they started telling everybody about it on the, as far as the public, right? So yeah, pretty pretty crazy. Um, things like that. Um, it's hard to tell what they've done, man. It you know because the military has crazy stuff compared to what we have, right? Uh, the public itself, and uh, you know a lot of people say, well, you know the elites and stuff like that are probably fifty, a hundred years in technology advanced from us. So that would not surprise me uh, what they even have at this point, right? Uh, your guess would be as good as mine. Uh, let me see here. <laughs> oh, look, a thermometer emoji. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Um, let me see. I believe Mars would be easier to live on, just harder to get to. Hatcher, man, you're right about that. I mean, there's, and it was funny that you mentioned that because there was, um, I don't know if you guys have seen this recently, but it was, uh, an interview with, um, Neil deGrasse Tyson, where he said, they said, uh, what do you think about, uh, Elon Musk and, you know, getting to Mars? I think it was in 2030, 2035. And he says, I don't think you'll be able to do it. And I don't think, uh, we'll ever see man on there. I went, really? This is a scientist saying that? So seriously? Um, and his question was, what does Elon got to gain by it? Well, wouldn't the same question apply to NASA as well? What do they got to gain by it? Let's suppose for a moment they, I mean, obviously they're trying to start a civilization on there, but let's suppose for a moment they found actual, uh, what looked like uh, microbial, um, you know, life at one time. In the okay, now what? So there's got to be something on. He actually said, now if there was oil or diamonds on there, I'd see their point. Well, 
that doesn't mean he's not trying to steer the public, you know, in a different area saying, oh, yeah, yeah, he's right. You know, they will never go there. So on. Um, I don't believe that. I, you know, there's a motive for it. And like I said, you know, with all of the things we're seeing in these photos, I, I think we all know the reason why they're there. That's the motive. And uh, believe it or not, Elon might actually be privy to that. And this is the reason why he wants to get his. He actually said he wants to die on Mars. Why not? If they predict, if predict, if they, <laughs> if they actually, um, if his predictions are actually right and they actually go and they got it all down pat, they can fly there with no problem, so on and so forth and come back. What would be the, you know, why not? He's got the money to do it, right? Why not? Uh, it's heard. Okay, Chris, YouTube live stream is paused on my device. No live picture, but can hear him just fine. Huh. That's odd. Try to refresh the page. Maybe that'll help. Um, so, uh, this thing just jumped up on me, guys. So I'm sorry about that. Uh, many men, one, one to lost. I totally agree. I think they are now underground. Yeah, if you're talking about like the Martians and stuff like that, if there is any, you know, inhabitants on there, you may very well be right. I think it's a combination of both. I think when the temperature's right, they all come out. Everything's fine, but it gets too cold or too hot. Boom, underground. And like I said, they're protected by the actual uh, magnetosphere. What they have is like, it's just in certain spots of Mars. And it, you know, as long as you're underneath this magnetic part of, uh, uh, you know, that area, you're protect you're protected from any of the radiation coming from the sun, right? So it's kind of like we have here on Earth. We're protected by our own magnetosphere and stuff like that. So, yeah. Nacho Libre is in the house. What's going on, man? Good to see you in there. Uh, Daniel Webster, in my opinion, some of the best UFOs of all time were photographed on or near the moon. I don't uh, prescribe to secure team anymore, but he did have two identical UFOs, both of them on the moon. Yeah, I mean, people have seen a lot of these crazy things. Now, some of them, it's just too blurry to see any of it. I uh, can't tell what it is other than a little dot moving around, so there's no way to do it. But when you actually get shapes of these things in rural, and I'm not saying clear, clear, because it's tough to do that, right? Uh, but if you can get it, like, detailed pretty decent, let's say 60%, 70%, you don't have to be 100%, then you can actually see the shape of it, and it's not just some CGI blob on the screen moving along. Ooh, yeah, look at that. So, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's it's hard to tell what these things are but yeah I, I think i remember the one you're talking about he had like the two identical i don't know if it was the uh um the triangular ones or what it was but it seemed to me i remember this is a while back wasn't it daniel i've seen the new images of pluto and it's absolutely amazing i've seen a couple of them myself too hatchet man pretty good stuff mm, oh there it goes again American Rebel, I just uh, just stopped in for a moment to say hello. Hello, Chris. Hello, everyone. What's going on, American Eagle? Uh, I want to say Eagle all the time. I keep thinking of the other guy, the, the Eagle has landed, so it kind of confuses me. Uh, American Rebel, good to see you in there, man. Wave a big hand at you. Uh, you said uh, there's so much we just don't know uh, what they you know what they've been up to. All of these years. Cheers for answering my uh, my answering, Chris. Uh, like I said, I try to get to all of you guys this way here. We can uh, so nobody gets left out. Sometimes people get mad at me. Oh, you know, but sometimes this thing just jumps so quickly. It's hard to tell, right? Oh, okay. Yes, uh, Dan, you're right about that. Um, uh, let's see. You put on the, I don't know how you feel about this, but I always heard that one of the Viking tests was positive for life. Uh, they were feeding a sugary radioactive uh, substance. Um well, they actually, again, you know, back in the 1975, when they had the Viking lander there, they it actually had its own little laboratory on there. It had a little scoop and picked up some uh, some of the uh, sand and soil. 
And uh, underneath was actually a little bit of frost. And of course, they, you know, just left it exposed and it melted. Um, so there is during the daytime, the sun will beat on it, melt it and turns to water and then refreeze it at night. Well, so there's argument between scientists saying, well, you know, we already found what looked like uh, microbial uh, life in the dirt. And of course, uh, it wasn't quite that. It's inconclusive. Yeah, I think they're trying to kind of like, eh, don't say nothing, guys, you know, kind of thing. So, yeah. Um, photography, light and magic you put on there. There was a guy that attached a GoPro onto a weather balloon and sent it into space. He got that high. Uh, he got images of Earth's curvature. It only cost about $2,000. Well, and that's true. So, man, I'll bet a lot of flat earthers are hating that. <laughs> Not good. Darn it. Hate to burst their balloon. No pun intended. Um, Mini Min Wonderlust, you said, I want to send you a photo, Chris. Can you uh, host your email? Uh, yeah, Mars Anomalies at AOL.com. Pretty simple. Try to make it simple so people can see it. Jason McVeigh, I love what you do. Keep up the good work. Well, I appreciate it, Jason. We do our best. Get it out, right? Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, I seem to be working here. I think, um, let me see that they use. Well, yeah. What did you put on there? Let me see. I just jumped up again here. I was just trying to read Daniels again and nachos. Uh, anyways, he said, uh, and I heard that the test that they use, they said there was no life. Also says, the life deserts in Antarctic are devoid of life. So in other words, they went with a flawed test. Um, I don't think that's the case because now, um, I mean, they've seen life in Antarctica. I mean, this time, I'm trying to remember what they did. There was there was a, some soil or something in Antarctica where they taken it. And a lot of it was like frozen underneath this frozen uh, tundra areas, right? It was, uh, they, they took it out and literally these microbial life forms started to come to life where they were literally dead, but they, because of the heat and everything else, they started to come back to life. Um, I don't think, I think they're just crap. I, you know, again, I think I heard the same thing. This is the reason why they were going back and forth and saying, oh yeah, the test wasn't really conclusive, blah, 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 blah. And so, yeah. I miss, uh, Heard you put on your live stream is buffering, no playing, chat is up. National Libya, I need your help. <laughs> well, it seems to be working here. Seems to be working pretty well. Uh, James Cragen, you put on there. Uh, Chris watched a video the other day called Did We Go? It is well worth a look. I will. It will shock you when you see uh, Armstrong and the German connection. Um, I think I'm familiar with it, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, I'll have to check it out again, but just, you know, because sometimes I, I'm, you know, I don't remember it. And then I click on, oh, yeah, I've seen this. And I watch a lot of this stuff too, guys, to be honest with you, you know, just to see, you know, what other things are, you know, and, and there's different sides of opinions to see, you know. That's right, guys. Smash that like button. Smash it. Hmm. Eamon Barr, hi from Northern Ireland. Love your channel. Well, I appreciate that. And uh, thanks for, you know, joining us tonight. Yeah, absolutely, James. Yeah, Chris, man, uh, NASA tested bacteria in space and found that it could uh, adjust to different temperatures. Absolutely. Life will find a way. You know, that's why a lot of people have, they get this confusion going, um, you know, there's no way life, you know, could live on a certain gaseous planet or couldn't live on that. Why? Why? It doesn't have to be like us on certain planets because you go, clearly nothing could live on it, right? But you get microbial and even macro, depending on what it is, could live on there. It can adapt. So yeah, why not? And if you get these hardy bacteria that can live in different temperatures and stuff like that, why couldn't it? Right, <laughs> really? <laughs> I found a flat earth emoji. Oh, God. Nacho, I'll catch the rest of the stream tomorrow. Got to go. Everyone have a great evening. All right, Nacho, just remember 5 p.m. next week. This way it's a little earlier for our friends on the other side of the pond. 
And if you're there, there you go. Uh, so it'll help everybody out. So have yourself a good night, man. Good seeing you in there. Mm. Ben Harlow. Hey, hey, Chris. What's going on? Good, good to see you in there, man. <laughs> Rachel Anderson, yeah. Flat Earth people have flat, flat moon. Uh, uh, what is it? Just jumped up on me. Just as I was reading yours, um, Rachel. Uh, flat Earth people have flat Earth brains. That's true. I mean, heck, if anybody's ever been in a plane before, you can literally see the curvature. Take a couple photos of it. I put on there. If you watch my video, the Earth is not flat. I've done it myself. And uh, you can see that slight curve at even at 35, 40,000 feet in the air. You can see that. Um, and the window on the plane, they say it distorts. It gives you that weird. Uh, fish eyed land or whatever the heck it was. It's like, no, it does not. I, I blow that theory right out of the water. Even sitting on the tarmac in the plane, you can, uh, yeah, bull. Power play in 1979, the shot on the moon. Heard about it? Yes, I have. Um, trying to remember which mission that was. And I believe that was the Soviet Union. Um, trying to remember which one that was. Drawing a blank on this right now, but I believe the Soviet Union had done that. This goes way back, I think, in either the 60s. Miss Heard, yeah, you got it straightened out. All right, yes, my device is now working correctly, Chris. Like button smash. Sweet. Sometimes it just does that, man. Sometimes I, I'll be watching somebody's video or live stream and just kind of like freeze up on me and I'll just, just refresh it and it seems to work itself out pretty well after that. Uh, let's see here. We got everybody on board. I have to make an announcement. And uh, unfortunately, I know you guys don't want to hear this. I get it. But this is a little... Um, um, let me put this aside here. This is to my good buddy. Ah, sarcasm, that is. Uh, to Mr. Bruce He's All. And before you guys, I know you're going to say, oh, man, not this again. Just hold on. You'll understand why I'm saying this. And the reason why I'm mentioning this. Um... And this is directly at him, of course. So pay close attention, Bruce. Um, if, let me see what it says here. Uh, 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 uh. What a sad, sad person. But anyway, um, little warning to you. Next time you say that I am calling you some kind of, what did you say I, I said it was exactly? Um, child abuser? Is that what it was? Uh, you better have your facts straight. Okay. I've already talked to a good buddy of mine. He's a state policeman. Um, I already given him all the information about, you know, your little defamation of character, your little, your little videos, um, stuff like that. And he just, says, just give me the word and we'll make it. So, um, I'm getting tired of this crap. You know, I haven't done anything to this guy's channel. I haven't commented on there and I can ease, you know, it's funny because he just commented on one of his live feeds saying, Oh, uh, he doesn't have the balls to say anything. Oh, no crap. I've been blocked. Unblock me. Unblock me, Bruce. See who's got the balls. Um, here's the thing. I haven't tried to, I mean, even said I was going to like trash his channel, like uh, hack it, um, you know, whatever. Comment on it. I don't have the time. I really don't. But I'll tell you what, this is where I draw the line. You know, now he made this little, uh, I didn't know this at first, but uh, a friend of mine told me about it on his little piss ant uh, YouTube page. I'm sorry, not YouTube, Facebook, uh, where he had me, he put it, made a video of me of my own video and just like took like bit, little bits and clips and try to make a comedy out of it kind of thing, which is kind of disturbing. Um, but the sad thing about it is he says in the, in the actual description and, uh, he puts on there, I'm going to let you guys watch, see this yourselves. Um, let me see. This is the actual, I'll do this. I'm going to give you the link to his page. Okay. Check it out. Just go down. Just, just go down a little bit there and uh, look at his. You'll see my video down there. And he actually says in the description under it, I called him a child abuser. Okay. This is a little project for you. Seeing you're trying your best. Um, seeing you're trying your best to convince your subs, which I don't understand why they just go by your word, but I got a little project for you. Why don't you make a video of me stating and showing where my text says that you are an abuser, a child abuser, 
and or a video stating that I and I actually say that you are those exact words, child abuser. I said on my video that you trash somebody, right? And then you went after his daughter and trashed her. Where does it say anything about groping, hitting, any of that? Where does it say that? So you want to convince your your subs, Bruce? Yeah, make a video about it. Prove prove your point. It's time for you to man up and actually start saying, you know, well, instead of just talking shit, you better you better come correct. Like I said, you better make sure uh, next time you decide you're going to say that I said you were a child abuser and all this other crap just to try to make people go against me and stuff like that. You know, my buddy just told me right out. He says, you know what? Just let me know. If you think you are like a long distance away just because you're in Canada, that the long arm of the law can't find you, buddy, you're solely mistaken. I will press charges on your ass. I haven't done nothing to you, but I'm going to start. How's that sound? Just one more time. Watch what happens. Um, I'm tired of your crap and I'm tired of your shit, buddy. Um, you know, he's sitting there crying wolf. His channel's going down. It's crashing and burning again. And, and this heard, you, you know what I'm saying on this. He's blaming us for his lack of money on his channel. You know, first of all, this happened long before I came along and started doing this. You've been trashing people for a long time, buddy. It has nothing to do with any individual here. Um, and that's what I'm talking about. This, this shit goes up my ass. And I, guys, I'm sorry for swearing. I really do. I am sorry because I know you get these families out there. But when, you know, again, name calling, eh, I don't care. I, I really don't give a crap. I already told you guys, you know, basically it's a compliment coming from him. But when you start saying, I said that he was a, you know, oh, you called me a, 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 a child abuser or whatever, prove it. You know what? Many times, like he said, oh, I, I took his work. I know some of his subs are on this channel right now. And I know, Bruce, you're watching this. Prove it to your subs. Prove it to them. It's about time you man up and get the balls to actually start doing this. You know, you could talk crap all you like. Prove it. I want to see you show it in your video where I say he's a child abuser. And I want you to see if it's in a video, I want you to see where exactly I say that. Because even the video you posted on Facebook, nowhere do I say that you groped, hit, or anything of that, that sort about a child. Nowhere did I say. I said you trashed another person's child. You went after him and trashed him. It's exactly my words. Prove it otherwise, big mouth. I'm getting tired of this crap. I've been saying nothing. And in this video, this is what's funny. I actually said this happened on the 12th on his live feed. He goes, dude, it's the 22nd. He puts these little annotations in his video, trying to be funny, trying to be cute. It's 12 year oldish. Um, but regardless, you know, guys, you know, but he's trying to be cute about it. And what he doesn't get is like, you're literally putting this on and I'm literally, you know, proving that you're an idiot and you're, you're doing all kinds of crazy things to other channels. And yet you're going to put that on your own channel. Hey, knock yourself out, dude. Do what you got to do. But you know what? For now on, instead of saying these things, prove it. Put your money where your mouth is. Okay. You know, he's a guy just like, uh, let me see what he says here. Wrote down some notes, by the way. Um, that's when I said, he said, uh, this was on August 9th on his morning live stream. You can check it out. And uh, at four minutes and 26 seconds, he says, let's see if he has the balls to, uh, you know, and of course, knowing full well, he's already got me blocked. So what's the point? Um, unblock me. Uh, 430. Then he says, uh, one of his subs say, turn on the light. I'm not lying to you guys. This is what he says. Takes this little lamp he's got on the side. He lifts it up a little bit. Oh, that's all I got. Little light. If I had some more revenue, I'd be able to get some light bulbs. Wow. I literally just freaked out and started dying. I almost died and fell over here. Uh, exactly. Miss Harris. Yeah. Um, you know, he says I'm, sab I'm sabotaging his channel. He's really, really sick of it. Okay, listen, the only person that sabotaged your channel, Big Mouth, was you. That's the problem. You don't know when to shut it. And you know what? You're trying to parade around like you're the, this is what's funny. He literally goes to Facebook, posts a little video. Like I said, he chops up my video and tries to use it in his favor, right? But then when he's on his live feed he's, or his regular channel, he's like, no, he's sweet and everything else. Everybody's going, oh, but he's such a sweet guy. Why is everybody picking on him? But behind you, he's... He's actually planning to hack my channel. And I showed you guys that. So I have proof of that. Everything I've ever said about Bruce, I've got proof of it. Do you big mouth, Bruce? I doubt it. I highly doubt it. You know what? Go ahead and make a video about me and show it about. I want you guys, I want you to show your subs seeing, you know, you've got them so convinced. Show them that um, where I say literally in a video that you are a child abuser or in a text. I want you to show it. That's your, that's your little homework. Big mouth. Boy, I swear to God. You know, and now he's using, you know, uh, you know, he's got this new other channel, whatever the hell it's called. Um, UFO Quebec Astronomy or OVNI Quebec Astronomy, whatever. Um, so he's going to do that in French, right? He's probably thinking, oh, good. I can talk about him in French. Nobody will know. <laughs> There's a lot of people that speak French here, buddy. Um, 
you're right, Shep. He is the hacker. That's the whole problem. He parades around like he's a sweet little guy. Oh, he's not little, right? But he's a sweet little guy on there saying, oh, yeah, man, um, you know, I'm a nice guy. These guys are picking on me to trash on my channel. You know, well, Rachel, he actually said that, you know, I've got it. I don't know if you caught my video, um, but I actually showed his comment saying, and it was between this other guy, Igor, and himself. And he's saying, oh, we can attack, you know, Mars Anomalies, like this, just say the word. And he's, well, I don't want to resort to that, but I, I will if I have to. So just the idea he's he's in cahoots with somebody else to do this tells me it's not the first time he's done this. And Miss Heard, this or Heard, or Heard, this is where you might have been getting your hacking from. I'm not saying he did it. I'm just saying that may be a good possibility. Now, you know, I'm not going to make accusations like he does and say he actually did it. I didn't say that. I'm saying if he's actually conspired to do it to me, what makes you think he wouldn't do it to another channel? Think about this a minute. So, you know, it's just, it's sickening. And I haven't said anything about it. And then that video, like I said, that he put on Facebook, he says, and I did it and he put it posted on the 22nd. Funny thing about it. And I he goes, what are you saying? 20, it's the 22nd he's putting in the, in the video and all this other crap. I'm going, yeah. But here's the funny part. While I was away from the 12th, July 12th to the 22nd, he did nothing but run his mouth about me. So I gathered the information. This is the reason why I made the video on the 22nd, talking about his 12th. So, and then he's just not stupid enough or smart enough to catch on to this shit. And he's just writing these dumb things on there and everything else. But that's my last warning to you, Bruce. You want to you wanna keep up with this crap saying I'm, I'm saying you're a child abuse and everything else, making false accusations? Just, just keep it up. You know, I haven't done anything yet, but I will press charges against you. You can, you can mock my words on that. I'm tired of this BS. You know what I mean? Um, you know, he keeps saying, oh, Chris is running his mouth. No, the only time I run my mouth is when you run yours. I'm just answering to yours. Okay. That's as simple as that. Just shut your mouth, open your little channel that you got, your little French channel, which is going to totally, you know, screw it for the people who can't speak French. So good luck with that. Um, but anyway, we'll see how long it takes before you trash all the French people over there. Sadly, I hate to see that happen, but let's just see how long that lasts. You know, it's like I said, guys, I usually don't voice my opinion about stuff like that. You know, like I said, I've been quiet about this and stuff like that as far as, you know, because like I said, I don't hack people's channels. I don't go on. I don't even go on his channel, even comment. I can easily make because he's got me blocked. Right. So I could easily make uh, another account and trash him. And of course, that'll just get blocked. But I don't do that. That's childish. I don't care. Now, he's done it to me. I don't remember. What was that channel, uh, Miss uh, Heard, that he put on there? Remember that one? It was uh, Hacks Exposed or something like that. He actually made another uh, another channel purposely and had my video trashing me. And then I said, I wonder who that is. I go on there, look at the videos. It was John Walson videos that he was trashing, I guess. And I knew right off the bat. He totally shot himself in the foot. Guess what? Took the channel down. So, yeah, who's the one that's really running around doing all of this bad stuff, right? But it's him. It's I mean, it's everybody else. It's everybody else trashing poor Bruce. Bullshit. Tired of it. You know? And I hate to be like that, guys. I really hate to talk like that, you know, and my apologies. You know, I just get tired of that crap, and I just can't stand it anymore. I will press charges on you, buddy. You think you got a problem now? Wait. Keep it up. Best thing to do is just shut it and just keep on going with your, with your work, and just that's it. Yeah, I agree with you, James. I just want to crack that D-head Bruce right in the face. Chris, man. Fuck, man. He crossed the line big time this time. Yeah, I mean, you know, I get tired of it. You know, it's like I said, he's attacking other channels. Claims he's not. Um, and he said on that video that, oh, where's this guy that has 400 uh, uh, videos that he had taken down? What, do you think I'm going to say his name again so he could trash him even more so? Give me a break. You got his little trolls that come from his channel and trash his people's channel. I, use, I see him on my videos now. I see him on my videos. He's literally having people, you know, coming on here and give me thumbs down. Oh, gee, I'm really hurt by that. Ooh, um, I'm not going to be able to sleep tonight. But you know what I'm saying? It's just, yeah. I mean, yeah, he needs therapy. You know, there's no reason for that crap. If I was him, I would just like, just move on, act like nothing happened. But no, behind the scenes, he's literally be being sneaky and vindictive and doing these things, but claims, I, I don't do anything wrong. They're all after me. And now they, they cut off my revenue. I wonder why. There's one person, look in the mirror, my man. That's the person that trashed trashed you, you, no one else. This is only culminated from all of the stuff's been building up all this time. And then you finally ran into a channel that's not going to take your crap and just expose you for you, who you are. This is the reason why you're so angry. This is the reason why you're pissed off. That's all there is to it. Now you're throwing a fit. Oh, oh it's because of them. It's not because of me. I've never done anything. 
You know, you got other these other subs that decided to trash you because they know who you are now and what you do to other channels as you go along. So who's really the jerk here, right? Anyway, let's move it along. But that's my challenge to you, buddy. There's your little homework. Put a video about me saying, showing that, um, that I actually said that. Either typed it in a, in a comment section about you being some kind of child abuse or whatever, or me actually saying child abuse. I want you to say that. You need to do that for your subs, not me, for your subs. And by the way, I won't say a word about that. I'll excuse that video. And here's proof, because I'm going to excuse that video if you put it up. So in other words, I will not tell my buddy, the, the, state, the state policeman, I will not say a word to him. I'll just say, listen, I put this up here and I gave him a challenge to actually do it. You know why I'm not afraid? Because you won't do it. And you have no proof to back it like everything else. Oh, he's going to take my work. Take your work where? If I was going to steal your work, I would have done a long time ago. Prove that I did. Again, everything you say, you can't back. So shut it or prove it. Stop talking and do the work. Simple as that. Woodcraft, I inscribed to... Unscribed, un, I'm sorry, unsubscribed to Bruce's channel a half an hour ago. You know, he's, again, you know, anybody could follow his work if they want to. I'm not going to judge anybody as far as that goes. If you believe that it, what he's showing is the real deal, then you should watch him. Um, you know, that's, that's all there is to it. I'm not going to tell him not anybody not to go there. But, you know, as far as I'm concerned, um, you know, people like that, they don't deserve recognition. They don't. And then the only reason why people haven't taken to his work is because it's bogus. It's bullshit. I mean, it's, you know, anybody who's got a blown up channel looking at it and they're going, oh, this guy wants to communicate with me. Then I heard he wants to uh, communicate with uh, real Roberts, uh, Jimmy Roberts. Well, are you kidding me? Whew. Jimmy's got a good head on his shoulder. He's going to look at him and go, let me just check his workout. Oh, God. Hell no. Yeah, you're right, Lionheart uh, Glassworks. You're right. Acknowledging that dude empowers him. Yeah. He's, he's, he's crashing and burning. Um, and you know what? Like I said, I would be the last person. I'll, I'll tell you guys the truth. I'll be the last person to ever take somebody's livelihood away from him. And I, I haven't. He's done it himself. And like I said, he's crossed the line when he's called me out saying I was a liar and I was trying to take his work and everything else. And everything he's ever said about me, I proved it. I got in a video. So, um, and actually, I actually took my video off too, by the way, which I still have. And I still may post it if need be. Um, so this way here, nobody gets their wires crossed and don't think I'm just, you know, blowing smoke. Um, everything I've ever said was the facts, was, was facts and truth. Um, in fact, you're going to need that video he did about me. Excuse me. Um, it's funny because he has people telling him, oh, you're the real dick and everything else. Because um, anybody can watch any of my videos. I never trashed him. I always, you know, said high praise of him. I always, you know, said that he's doing good work. Um, and like I said, when I told him about, you know, what looks like little UFOs over the surface, I said, that's the money shot. And that's what you should keep doing. And like I said, funny enough, that's what he keeps doing. So if anything, I was only trying to help the guy, but you know, whatever, I'm not going to rehash this. It's over. I just wanted to get that point about the, um, calling him some kind of child abuser, which is absolutely insane. And it's got to stop and it better stop. Um, exactly because we didn't bring his channel down. Bruce did. Exactly. That's, you know, he's the only one who shot himself in the foot. Now we'll see how fast it takes him to trash his other channel. Everybody will see through him too. And like I said, uh, you know, he keeps, I don't know why these people follow him blindly. Like, oh yeah, whatever he says is the truth. Well, wait a minute. I backed up my stuff. Everything he's ever said about me, I showed you guys. And everything I've said to him, I've showed you guys. Yet he says thing and people go, oh yeah, well, well, Chris is a jerk then. No, 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 no. I've actually proved my point. Can he back his up with actual proof? I don't think he can. That's your challenge, Bruce. Material, yeah, you're right about that. Go back to work. Catch a man, I said a few minutes, uh, weeks ago, I'm sorry. He's uh, only in it for the money. Well, yeah, funny enough now, if you go to his, that, to go down to his site... Um, he's, uh, he's got now, he's trying to get, you go through bit shoot and, um, stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like I said, if he's doing honest work and he's just keeping his mouth shut, then you know what? People want to follow him, let him follow him. I don't have a problem with that. You know what I mean? Make an honest living with it. I don't have any problem. Listen, do what you got to do. But if you're going to stop and, you know, trash other, and this is, like I said, this has been happening, uh, uh, Miss Heard, you know, long before, um, you know, I came along and helped him out. And he says, he still says, I didn't try to take him on and take me, uh, take him rather under my wing, which I did try to help him out. 
well, I got more, uh, in his arrogance, is like, well, I got more subs than him, so why would I benefit from it? Um, more subs? So just because you got more, you know, okay, that's fine. I don't have a problem. I even said in my video, remember that? I said, I hope you get 2 million to 3 million subscribers, but yet I'm jealous of him. <laughs> Guys, he's a clown. But anyway, as we were getting on here. Yep. Shep, you're right about that. I think he's a hacker. Exactly right. Oh, let's see. Oh, <laughs> my bad, Shep. <laughs> oh, don't say blind. Um, Daniel Webster, if he is Bruce, he's all, then I'll no longer subscribe to him. Yeah, it's unfortunate, man. He just, and like I said, I, I use people like that. I use the, the, the analogy. is like a locust. They come in, they swoop in, they eat what they want and take what they need, and then off they go, and they just leave just destruction behind. That's exactly why I use the analogy for people like that. Just takes me, oh, I can just get the revenue off these people because I'll get more subs and, psh, and then I'll close the door on the people behind him and say, oh, he hacked me or he trashed me, whatever, whatever. Um, yeah. Oh, Gerard, don't worry about that. Hey, Chris, hope all of this uh, crap doesn't stop you from doing your great work on your channel. Oh, absolutely not, brother. Don't worry about that, man. Don't worry about that. That will not happen. Alien Hunter. What's going on, man? Uh, I'm embarrassed I tried to help his channel out. He is no longer on my recommendation channels now. We live and learn. Absolutely, Alien Hunter. I mean, you're doing great work. This is what I love about your channel. I'm glad you're on here. Um, I've actually uh, featured one of your photos or videos on mine uh, because I believe you're doing great work. Um, and, you know, so keep doing what you're doing. Uh, I found some fascinating things in your videos. So I recommend everybody go see Alien Hunter's uh, page in the channel. Um uh, he doesn't do any commentary, but he puts music behind it and does real close-ups of the lunar surface and stuff like that. So check his channel out. Um, I don't believe I have a link to your um, homepage on YouTube. So if you want to drop that, uh, Alien Hunter, I'll, I'll go ahead and drop it so people can go have a look and sub to your channel. Uh, Pyro Boys, uh, going to sleep Monday on vacation to Spain. See you, Chris. I appreciate you stopping in, man. And stopping in, man. I appreciate that. Uh, good to see you in there. And, uh, again... Five o'clock Eastern time next week will be on. So, um, you know, make sure you join us there, right? James Gregg and Chris, uh, Chris, man, you are top of the range and all of the great work you have been doing for us all. Uh, so go to hell, Bruce. Oh, <laughs> well, I appreciate that, James. Yeah. Like I said, I try to keep it real here. And um, and if it means, you know, I, you know I, I hate to use the profanity. I did that last time. I said, uh, you know, I said. You know, I wasn't going to swear and I called him an a-hole. So, you know, my apology. I know you got a, lot, a lot of you guys got kids in there and I hate to do that, but there's nothing that perturbs me more as people that run around claiming they're innocent and then behind the scenes are just trashing everybody, literally. Um, but I'm the victim. Oh, my God. Uh, anyway. Um, yeah, Pete's vlog says, Alien Hunter, who, what's up, man? I'm a subscriber channel. Awesome work. He does. He does great work. I even said that more than once. Oh, uh, Tom Stevenson, you said, have you ever thought Bruce uh, wants the reaction from you knowing he's under your skin? Just ignore the uh, the dick and uh, let him spin his own web of bullshit and trap himself. Well, he does. And that's the thing. But I'm just trying to help him just hang himself a little bit more. Um, because, like I said, to me, he's not really under my skin. What, again, the only thing that got under my skin is that, you know, just to me, they're just false accusations, guys. When you say to another man, it's like calling somebody like some, you know, uh, pedophile, right? That's like the, I don't, my own enemy, I wouldn't call him that um, because I don't think it's right. Unless, of course, he actually was. Then, you know, if there's actual proof of that. Other than that, I would not say that to any man. You know, it's, I just call it how I see it. So if that's the truth, if I said that in any way, shape, or form, that I said that he's some kind of child abuser, then prove it. That's all I'm saying. Um, trust me, he's not under my skin. He's about to get, he's about to get uh, charges pressed against him. You know, I haven't said anything or done anything. But I'm about to, if he doesn't quit. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, good analogy, Chris. Well, that's what I feel. It's these kind of people, these scumbags that do stuff like that. He says, if I don't have the balls. Well, like I said, you know, I ain't got the balls. Unblock me. 
Unblock me so I can tell you subs who you really are. SC, hello, Chris, ladies and germs. What's going on? Good to have you in there. Miss Heard also, too, uh, she highly recommends Alien Hunter. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. WTF is that. Anyways, back to real stuff. Absolutely. Um, did you see the rocket that NASA launched a few days ago and it seems to have gone out on control? Watch a few videos on YouTube. I'm trying to remember if that was the actual capsule. Well, it wasn't a capsule. What was that? Um, I'm going to draw a blank on it now. Um, the one I recently saw actually went up pretty good. I mean, um, I know they had done... I'm trying to remember which one this was now. Yeah, it was a... Yeah, was this two days ago or three days ago? It was like a few days ago that they actually showed that, wasn't it, James? Um, yeah, I mean, these guys, listen, a lot of people go, you know, well, like, let's say um, Elon Musk, they sent up a rocket, right? And what's funny about it is they'll say, um, you know, well, that one exploded on the launch pad. You know what, guys, this is all part of progress. You know, people go, ah, oh, they failed. They'll never be able to make it to anywhere, blah, 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 blah. You listen, this is not easy stuff. You know, this is, this is, you're, you're launching, you know, you're using so much thrust on a capsule or a rocket to get this thing off the ground is basically like a giant bullet being shot into the air. So yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, these, these things, you're going to have mistakes. You're going to have these, like what happened on the, um, on the space shuttle, we had an O-ring malfunction and boom, you see what happened there, the challenger, you know, God rest their souls. But you know, these, these are the things that happen. And unfortunately some people had to pay the price, but it's all part of advancement. It's all it is. And it's unfortunate these things happen, manned or unmanned. Um, yeah, you know, I don't, I think it's good that they, they, you know, they have these failures. And I'm not talking about people losing their lives. I'm talking about like these regular rockets, right? Something happens to them, they'll make them better. It's kind of like a car, you know, they've, they made them better. Well, wait a minute, it's not quite perfected. Let's do this. You know, you get these variable transmissions. Well, they're not quite right. Um, I don't know if you guys have you know, worked on old machines back in the day, but some of these, like I used to work on some of the machines in the job I was in, cause I was a tool setter for 13 years. Um, they had four slides and they have a Vara drive on them, which is basically two pulleys. They go in and out. You got an electric motor. And then every time you adjusted that, these pulleys would go, these plates would go in and out, causing it, you know, to ride higher on the, on the pulley or lower in the pulley. So it actually speed the machine up or slow it down. So this, this, these machines are these kind of, uh, mechanics, so to speak, are not new. This goes back in the fifties, these machines. So, but the thing is to perfect them on a car that can last so for so long, that's a whole different ball game. Well, you know, these things will blow to pieces. Some companies make better Vara drives, meaning, you know, actual variable transmissions and some of the absolute junk. So yeah. <laughs> What's up welfare gang? Okay. Uh, welfare office. Hey, I'm asking you a question. Oh, Rachel, uh, Renee, uh, Rachel's asking you a question. Oh, really? Mackay Christ Christberg, Christberg, uh, you are a racist? Okay, how? Hey, did you receive my email sent a few days ago? Uh, UFO sin UFOs in my life. Uh, did you, now was that in my email? Was that the Facebook uh, message? Let me know. And like I said, I, to be truthful, guys, I haven't been on it for a while. Um, I'm going to say probably beginning of the week I got on it real briefly. So if you put it on there anytime after that, you know, my apologies. I haven't been to it. I am black, so he won't listen. Okay. Uh, let me tell you something, guy. Um, person, you know, woman, man. Uh, let's just put it this way. I came from Rhode Island. Okay. It's a melting pot. I'm friends with everybody. Um, good people. I'm friends with anyone. I don't care what your, kin your, your skin color is. I don't care what it is. Um, it's, you know, I've had, uh, Asians, Haitians, uh, Japanese, Chinese, African-Americans. doesn't matter who you are. You're good people. I talk with you. Uh, let's see, Rachel, I have no idea why he's that doctor comes in his eye might be some kind of disease or something. I'm sorry for that guy. Um, I said it was interesting. Saturn, the moon, and Jupiter were all lined up in one view. So I uh, got some great uh, footage 
with a few UFOs and Terminator and Sinus Iridium. Uh, lots of good details was visible. Oh, that's awesome, Michael Stark. No kidding. That's on uh, now. You got your own channel, right? If I'm not mistaken, I like to check it out. Stream of yep. And with that, are you a racist comment? I'm out. Cheers, Chris, folks. All righty then. Have yourself a good one. SC John Leonard Walson has the most clear and close up close ups of the moon. I mean, there's a lot of people out there doing some good work about this stuff, whether it's through their own scope, um, and they're showing really good detail. Um, um, P and K space imaging doing great work. In fact, they just did one on uh, I think it was a uh, Saturn. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember if it was Saturn, Jupiter, and the moon, and uh, great stuff. Um, in fact, I just watched one of their recent ones, and uh, good stuff, man. Good, actually, good, good details, right? So, yeah. Mm. All right, let's see. Oh, yeah. They come out of the woodwork there, Pete. Uh, Pete's vlog. Oh, you're welcome, Rachel. He said, thanks, uh, Chris, for getting her attention for me. Um, he's either got insomnia or smokes bud or does a bit of crack. <laughs> oh, man. Not good, especially all that combination. Even Southerners like me. Well, that's cool, Mark. Nothing wrong with that. James uh, Craig, and don't forget the Irish, man. Uh, you're friends with uh, with us, too. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm Irish myself. Might as well be 90. I'm like 90% Irish, though. Tom Stevenson, Chris, do you think uh, we are getting slow disclosure regarding what's really out there or is it most, oh, I'm sorry, or is it more misdirection trying to steer us away from the truth? I think it's both. Be truthful because you get these scientists, like I said about Neil deGrasse Tyson, where he says, oh, I don't think we'll ever get to the, get to Mars as far as people, right? I think that's crap because no scientist is going to talk like that, right? And they'll be like, you know, they're going to have high hopes because they know the technology that's out there, so on and so forth. So, um, so yeah, he's been blocked, misheard. So, um, so yeah, we all we all know he's a, he's a jerk. Um, but anyway, so you've got him saying, saying, stating that. And I'm saying, why would he say something like knowing that again the technology is rolling forward quickly too? I might add, and yet, and then you got um, you know slow disclosure, which is things we're seeing in these photos, whether it be the moon, Mars, other planets, moons, doesn't matter, right? So what gives? Is it they're trying to? steer us in a different direction other than trying to find the truth. But then when you look at the photos, you can see pure proof. Like I said, I got the uh, Mars uh, video coming up tomorrow. So it'd be like early evening, um, you know, obviously Eastern time uh, for, for me anyway. So, um, so that'll be out. And like I said, these things would look like mountains are not mountains. And like I said, I'll, I'll stick by that. And it's just some crazy stuff there, right? Yes, guys, slam that like button. Stream, well, Sky Stream Live with Mark D'Antonio. Mark Sims, damn right, LOL. <laughs> Hatchet Man, Chris, love your work, and you always give props to everyone looking for the truth, for real truth. Absolutely, Hatchet Man, and I appreciate it uh, again. I think you did this earlier. Uh, appreciate your support, man. Uh, yeah, I mean, here's the thing. I'm, and, you know, I guess I made that wrong mistake by uh, uh, doing with uh, BSA, if you know what I'm saying. Um, but as far as, like, people alien hunt or stuff like that, he's just doing his work, man. He's not trashing anybody. He's doing his work, showing some good stuff up close, different different photos. Just have a look at some of the stuff, man. You can just see stuff on the Terminator line and stuff like that. You know, uh, other channels like the other white meat, um, he'll claim that, oh, oh, I got the best stuff ever. Uh, no, you don't. Listen, he'll, he'll laugh and scoff at the idea of these LRO photos. Are you insane? This, this, this craft is literally 75 miles off the lunar surface. But yeah, my telescope is going to get better pictures. Whatever. 
Dream on, dream on. Um, so yeah, again, Hatcher Man, appreciate the support. Um, uh, let's see. Let me see here. Someone, I just this thing just jumped up on me again. Uh, send me an if you get a chance. Would you take a look for me to see what you think? Thanks. I will. PJM four a a a m m. <laughs> so. Exactly, James. Yeah, no scientist is going to talk like that because, like I said, they're usually optimistic, especially when it comes to the technologies that we're making today. So, yeah, it doesn't sound right on there. It's almost like he's just trying to steer people in a certain direction, you know. Let's get the populace to go this way, so on and so forth. Yeah. North Pole has been shifting since, oh, always. Uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, you get that. It's it's had a pole shift a while back, many years ago. Now it's coming back, so Yeah. Uh, it's, it's just constantly, you get this long-term wobble type thing and, you know, it's crazy. Uh, Richard Dolan is the effing man, big fan. Absolutely. Hey, toes one, we, the solar system. Yep. Uh, good evening, Chris, and all in the chat room. Paulo De Silva. What's going on, Paulo? Good to see you in there, man. Ah, there we go again. Awesome. Bye-bye, Snooksy. Oh, Snooksy, whatever the hell your freaking name is. Bye-bye. I love it when these guys come on there. I love the trolls. that They're the best because they'll go, you can sit there and tight and just go, bye. Takes me a split second, like a blink of an eye. What's the point? <laughs> What's the freaking point? As in, as individuals, Richard Mortimer, there you are. As individuals, it is it is possible some people feel moral pressure to try and release some truth, but there could be groups of agencies uh, who would like to make you think otherwise or uh, for various reasons. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, you said anytime, uh, Hatchet Man. I appreciate it. Um, so, you know, you've got... Again, people try to steer the popular some different way because here's the thing. If if you are like, if there's only one side to it, right, then people are going to believe wholeheartedly. But if you get the population to to clash with each other, they'll constantly fight about it. Oh, like this flat earth BS. Oh, no, it's round. It's flat. It's flat. It's round. You know, and they go back and forth all, all day long. It's crazy, right? Um, so if they could do that on every subject, whether there's life on other planets or not, um, then, you know, they'll have the public fighting with each other. So they'll never get a clear answer. They just, you know, use this kind of thing to, you know, confuse the population, right? Rene Cruz, I mean, you put on the, I mean, what's the big deal, Bruce? Still got more subscribers than Chris. He should be real happy and have nothing to complain about, Chris. I don't, I don't know. I uh, hope one day he can uh, make peace, maybe. Well, you know what? You know, if, if it was the other way around, okay, and I jumped the gun and I made suggestions to him and i said this that and the other and then i found that i was wrong i would just say guys i was wrong you know what i mean you don't try to save face by making up drumming up different lies and stuff like you just say it like it is man i screwed up i made a mistake guys i'm sorry you know and uh, please forgive me and then you get over it. that's called manning up uh but if you can't do that and you just want to play the blame game all the time well then you know how that works out right chris love you man but don't sing and, and knock what mock sims chris love you man but don't sing so sing it knocks my guitar out of tune. Oh, my bad. Sorry. Yeah. You, know, you remember, you guys remember the gong show way back in the day? If I'd done that, they would have bong. See ya. Kick me right off the show. Um, yeah, I don't want to mess up your guitar, man. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> uh, it is. Uh, UFOs in my life. It is. Um, so... All right, so how long ago was that that you uh, emailed me? Do you know? I mean, you don't have to be exact day, but if it was like two or three days ago, I probably didn't see it because I think I checked on last weekend. Might have been Saturday afternoon, and I haven't really gotten back to it. So again, my apologies, guys, because some guys get angry with me. They're like, oh, my God, you didn't see that? You know, you haven't seen my mail or my, my pictures. And, you know, to be truthful, I'm just like not on it all the time, you know? And um, But I do try to answer people. Like I go on my Facebook, people send me messages. I, I will send messages back and forth. Um, 
you know, I'll tell them, you know, sometimes they give me pitches. Hey, can you check this out? Can you check this out? Or take a look at this link or whatever, you know, and, uh, and I'll answer them. You know, in fact, it was, uh, I think it was, was it, uh, i trying to remember. Was it you, Richard? You asked me if, uh, yeah, it was you. They said, uh, you're going to have a, a live show tonight. I said, yeah, uh, 7 p.m. Uh, Eastern. So, uh, Al Utterback, you got that New York accent. Well, born and raised in Rhode Island. Um, now residing in uh, West Virginia, right? Perhaps you're ready. The climate changes. For example, where am I? It will be in the hundreds this week, where last week it was not, not as hot. Climate change? Well, I mean, to me, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, they're doing like an overall. They're not doing like a week by week kind of thing. Uh, because for me, um, you know, again, it's like gradually going up every, like, here's the, they'll have like, a, well, sorry about that, hit the mic. But they'll have this graph going up like this here, right? It'll go up. Okay, it's getting hotter and then back down. With every season, it will do that, right? But it seems like every time it comes up, it's a little hotter. It's a little hotter each each year, each year. Now, again, this may happen until we hit the peak of the 11-year cycle. And then, of course, it'll go back down. Global warming, ooh, seems to be over and done. But is it? You see, the, it, the, the sun gets more and more active up to that 11-year cycle, up to its peak, and then it just starts to come back down now. Now, I don't know how it is acting now. You can go to Soho or uh, that site, you know, we're basically, you know, looking straight at the sun. And uh, there's other channels that do it as well. Um, they actually talk about, you know, the space weather and stuff like that. It's kind of crazy stuff, right? Uh, did you talk to you? said, why don't you just report him and remove that trash? Um, he will keep making lies and tarnish you. Yeah, well, that's the thing. He can make the lies all he likes as long as he can back them. This is the reason why I don't understand why his subs don't at least say, hey, Bruce, I mean, you know, especially the ones that follow both channels, right? Um, can you prove what you're saying? You know why they won't? Because they'll get kicked off. Don't say any word against him or else he'll say, well, no, it's just good. Uh, you know, uh, it's good to have a debate. There is no debate with him. You either, if you disagree, you know, I don't think you're right about that certain thing. I think, boom, gone. You're, you're done. Hi, chat room. Hi, all. Alien Hunter is in the house. Did you drop a link to your, your um, YouTube channel, Alien Hunter? I don't know if I've seen it. I don't think I'm, I don't think I want to buy it. This way I can uh, send these guys over there. I can always get it too right here. Let me see if I can find this here. Got it right here. Copy, live streaming. Here is Alien, uh, Alien Hunter's channel. Check them out. Good work. Yes, Hatchet Man. Uh, so next weekend is 5 p.m., right? Absolutely. Everybody mock it down so you guys will know. Again, I'm just trying to accommodate everybody that's over on over the big pond and uh, and around the world. If we can, of course, obviously you can't go to New Zealand and because that's the next day, right? I think it's like 16 hours, is it? I could be wrong. Somewhere on there. Um, might be even a hair bit more than that, but... Um, Eamon Barr, do you have a job? Absolutely. Um, I'm basically a stock person for a big uh, grocery food chain. Um, basically, uh, that's all I do. I order everything in the uh, grocery store itself. When I say store, I mean, you're talking like 22 aisles. Um, at least my department, order it all, unload it from the trucks. You get it, put it all on the shelves, so on and so forth. And uh, so, yeah, definitely. Working it every day, six days a week. Yeah, Richard uh, Mortimer. Yeah, you put on there, uh, NASA uh, publicly admitted to directing rovers away from areas where light, uh, life, right, I'm sorry, life might be found, which I don't understand, too. This is what's crazy. If you heard about it, you know, way back in the day, they were talking about when they first sent these crafts there, meaning the craft, meaning landers, back in the 70s, and even the the rovers themselves. Well, they said they don't want to contaminate the surface of Mars. Well, wait a minute. Hold on. Um, really? What happened, what happened if they had microbes, microbial life, on board the actual Viking? Did we stop life there accidentally? Did we? What about the nuclear power plant that's on strapped on the back of the Curiosity rover? I guess if it's sealed completely tight, but what happens when that, you know, uh, radioactive isotope, you know, it's supposed to just simply burn out, and of course it'll lose its power supply. But what happens if that deteriorates? Something happens to it. Did you not contaminate the surface? Yeah.
Michael Stark, he said, Chris, it seems that the moon's surface has a color dithering frequency blocking ob uh, optics. A trick that seems to work uh, is applying a sine wave color uh, curve on the image spectrum surface structures appear. Yeah, I've seen people try to use that. I'm not really familiar with what, you know, exactly what you're saying. Um, I know what you're saying as far as sine wave color. Um, people, listen, here's the weird thing. I've tried to get what I can out of these photos. So again, uh, I was happy that I had, uh, again, my buddy Pete, who actually showed me the uh, the different plates of a photo, any photo, and that you can bring out different uh, anomalies or try to drag these things out through the manipulation. And it's the same thing when you're trying to look at it through uh, a telescope or whatever. You're trying to use the best optics and uh, any trick you can, basically, right, in the book to try to bring these out even more so. And any way you can do it, by God, do it, you know? Um, let me see. This thing just jumped up again. Crap. hate it when it does that. All right, here we go. Rapture ready. Fellow Texan, we melt. Uh, oh, yeah, it's scorching down there, isn't it? Yeah, M. Bra uh, Bronte, I'm, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing it right. Uh, good to see you in there, by the way. It's been a while, I think, it's, since you've been in there, hasn't it? Uh, Chris, I did ask him, and uh, then I was blocked. Yep. You can't just say anything against him. I, You know, listen, people have said to me, you know, Chris, I'm not seeing what you're seeing. I'm not seeing it this time. Okay. That's your opinion. You know, why should you be blocked from your own opinion? Now, don't get me wrong. I will remove comments that are like being like totally, you know, the swearing in the thing or whatever else. But if they just oppose me saying, Chris, I'm not seeing it this time, man. I'm just, you know, I'm not seeing anything you're showing. You know, I tried. That's fine. That's your opinion. Okay. I'm not going to trash somebody or throw them off the channel or whatever. Uh, you know what I'm saying? It's just, it's not correct to do that. It's not right. Uh, Chuck T, you put in there, Chris, do you think uh, global warming is space junk? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by that. Uh, enjoy your videos. Um, let me see. Junk science. Oh, I'm sorry. Junk science. Uh, no, I don't think it is at all. And like I said, we just talked about this uh, just not too long ago. Um, I believe it's a combination between us humans and our, you know, uh, manufacturing, all the stuff going on, the cars and everything else. That may be only maybe 20% of it. In other words, it's just adding and accelerating the global warming here on Earth. Now, again, the sun goes through an 11-year cycle, and like I said, it gets warmer and warmer and warmer each year. In other words, it just gets hotter and hotter, and then after the 11-year cycle, it starts to cool. So now you get this you know, really, really hot temperatures everywhere, and then it starts to come back down to normal, and then it might get colder in, in some years, and, and then it starts ramping back up again. Um, this happens every 11 years. You guys can check into this. Probably a Mercury and gravity craft is probably has a tube cylinder that spins Mercury in a cylinder at 20,000. Uh, yeah, Rachel. So, yeah, you're talking about the Mercury, uh, like kind of like the um, um, the manas and stuff that they talk about, right? Gravity wave that lifts the craft. Yeah, because basically you can put like a electric field around like Mercury and stuff like that, spin it X amount of RPMs, and you can get an anti-gravitational -gravit uh, field, and therefore you get launch and everything else. So, yeah. Glenn Allen, it's Monday, 1215 lunchtime here in New Zealand. Okay, that's what I thought. See, so we're going, you know, quite a few hours there, right? Um, so, yeah, you got uh, 16 hours. That's what I figured, somewhere roughly around there. Um, uh, so enjoy your lunch there, right? Glad you're uh, in there. Of course, in the, other, in the video the other day, around 12 to 14 minutes, you can clearly see structures to the left of what you are outlining. Smash them like buttons and share, guys. And you know what? You're right about that, James, because... Somebody else had said the same thing, and it might have been you to said it on there as well. When I went back to it to look at it, because like I said, when you guys say, yeah, man, you totally missed this, I will go back to it and look at the picture myself. And I'll be damned if a lot of you guys are not correct, because I looked at some of that, and some of these things, like I said, to me, it looks like just debris. You know, whether it's structural, meaning buildings of some sort, or something of that, it looks like debris smashed and scattered all over the place, right? And you guys are seeing a lot of that stuff, too. Uh, on the Mars alien structure pick, I see curved pieces to the left of the rover tracks. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. 
Uh, um, let's see. I don't ask what. Hey, Chris, the alien. Hey, Chris, alien hunter asked a question. Uh, don't know if you saw that. Um, did he really? Like I said, this thing jumps up on me every now and then. You guys are like, you know, you're posting on some, it'll just like jump up on me here. I don't know if I've seen it. I'm looking for it right now, guys. Hmm, not seeing it. Uh, Michigan Mister, do you understand our disappointment when you knock folks like Bruce sees all? Hmm. Not sure what that's supposed to mean other than, um, I, I mean, if you've been listening, what's been going on, uh, it's not knocking anybody. It's responding, uh, to accusations. You know, if I was to say to you that you're some kind of child abuser or molester or whatever, how would you take that? To me, if I went out there and said it to any normal man, I guarantee he's going to want to throw down right or wrong. Um, so when you come out with accusations like that, you should expect some kind of static, some kind of friction. So, you know, I'm sorry, I don't support somebody who's going to be trashing people, uh, saying false allegations towards people like myself. I'm just not going to stand for it. So I'm sorry if you agree with him, but I think you should ask him if he's got the proof saying what I said was somehow he's some kind of, uh, uh child abuser, ask him to prove it. Watch how fast, if you're a sub to him, watch how fast you get kicked off. Uh, Andy Webster, you live in West Virginia, huh? The monster capital of the world, beautiful state. It is very beautiful. I've got all kinds of mountains around me and everything else, man. You can't ask for anything more. Exactly, Rachel. Yes, will which will overcome inertia. Yep. Uh, somebody said something earlier, and I'm just trying to find it again here, guys. Eamon Barr, sorry for being nosy. Not a big deal, man. You ask a question, I'll give you an answer for it. At you, man. Yeah, he put on there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, hear that, Bruce? A job uh, you should uh, get one instead of bashing people that work for a living and do this for a hobby and having fun with it. Absolutely. That's exactly what I do. Um, I even hit the mic even periodically. Let me see here. Uh, uh, it might be a universal technology that it, that all advanced civilizations reach at some point. It might not be human. It might be alien. But if the gravity wave is correct, then there should should also... It should also create a gravity on your feet in space environment. Mm -hmm. It's amazing what you can do with torsion fields and all kinds of fields, right? I've been there. Uh, 1010 Cray, 1010, uh, anywhere near the uh, Mothman. Uh, that's probably about, whew, man, it's a good, uh, I'm trying to think how the distance of that. It's a good distance from me, but I've been there. Uh, I've actually, you know, it's like right there. It's pretty cool. If you've been there yourself, uh, you can see the actual Mothman. If they're standing in front of it, you got a road on each side of it. And of course, they got that little Mothman, little museum. And, you know, you can buy all kinds of souvenirs and stuff like that from there. Uh, cool little place to be. Yeah, it took me a good, I think, good couple hours to get there. Uh, Jeff Mon, you put Chris, did you get the pictures I sent to you? Uh, AOL email? I sent them twice, but hmm. Um, again, was it the beginning of the week, uh, Jeff, or during this week, rather? Let me know. George Powell, temp went down uh, last uh, 15 to 16 years. Well, see, that's the thing. Again, we're coming down probably from the cycle, right? Now, they still claim global warming. I don't know if I'd, I'd call it like something we're doing. 
right? So in other words, if it's nature's global warming, meaning from the sun, then it's nothing we're doing, right? So makes sense. Um, now, you know, when it starts to warm up and everybody starts having, but I don't know about you, but I mean, there's a lot of people out there that claim that lately in their areas, uh, I had friends of mine uh, from Canada say, man, it's been warmer. In fact, we just had one come down. It was a good friend of my wife's said that uh, it was extremely uh, warm in Canada. She said, I don't, I don't understand what's going on. And it's like one of the warmest it's been in, I don't know how many seasons, but uh, of course, then they'll have extremely cold. So it's hard to tell, man. It's like it's up in the air and up and down, you know. Correct. The left mountain had a uh, 3D square structure with a circle sitting on right at the hillside. The image are so NASA washed out. It's tough bringing out. So exactly, Michael, it is, um, you know, especially they're either make they either make things either way too dark. In other words, in between larger rocks or hills or. They make it extremely, uh, the exposures brought way up, like in the moon photos. And then, of course, they overlay them. They'll stack it over these photos and making it, you know, harder to see the details or any kind of uh, darker areas and shadows and everything else. So, like I said, you take any photo that's kind of vague to begin with, and it's a uh, low res. Now, take every bit of shadows and darker areas out of it. What does it do? It appears 2D as opposed to 3D, right? Uh, you said... Uh, I did your Tata. You put on the, uh, you ever thought about streaming on Twitch? If you are on multiple platforms, you can generate more revenue and attract more people. I've thought about it. In fact, uh, a friend of mine, she does that. Uh, she's on Twitch. She's a gamer um, and does a lot of that. And, um, you know, like I thought about it, but, you know, to me, this is a good channel. Uh, I've been rocking it there, uh, been doing good there. So um, it's not to say that it's not in the near future, but as of right now, it's like I've looked into it. You know, right now, it's just, you know, I'm cool with this right now. But like I said, I, you know, I'm trying to get more people to actually see, um, you know, because here's the thing, you know, you want to expose this and get the stuff out. Right. Um, and get the truth out. And like I said, people can examine them and make their own decisions. So, yeah, I'm, I'm more platforms. Yeah, I guess you could do that. You know. Uh, let me see. See, 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 see. SC, Chrissy calls you cue ball. No, he's actually going, what's he? No, no, uh, Egghead. It's his favorite little line. You know, I used to hear little five-year-olds use names like that. Like, you peepee nose. I mean, it just sounds so silly like that. It's just like, really? Are you five? Really? Um, yeah. All right. The images you used are now down to, uh, you know, 120p, 120p on Apollo Hybrid Online. Do you think... Is it dangerous sharing links? Um, I don't think so. Not at all. Why? You said the images you used are now down to into an Apollo library online. Do you think there is a danger sharing link? No. I don't see why there would be. Unless you've got a theory about that, you know. Um, and the other thing is too, is I tried to use uh my buddy Ken Johnston's uh library. He's up on Flickr as well. Look up Ken Johnston Senior Flickr. And uh, he's got a lot of the photos up there. And, you know, like I said, although they're manipulated and obfuscated and, you know, like I said, they use the acetate over these photos and, you know, basically, you know, bleach them out, so to speak, uh, or wash them out. Uh, his is like the second generation as opposed to the fourth where they were completely trashed. And I think they've been going back to more of these uh, photos. And uh, and I mean, lately, within so many years that they've been going back over them because now they're realizing more and more people are. Uh, really, you know, getting into these folders and really ripping them apart. So, you know, I try to get the best quality ones I can, if I can, you know. Dunning people by Twitter is not a form of news. Hmm, I'm not sure what that means. Okay. I checked out some Alien Hunter videos. Wow, pretty cool. I'll be going through his vids in the upcoming week. Oh, yeah, photography, light, magic. Yeah, you, you need to. He's Like I said, he's got some really good, uh, interesting stuff there. Uh, Al Utterback, you said, uh, I keep trying to send stuff, but my phone is cutting me off. Oh, cutting, I'm sorry, cutting me short on getting the whole sentence out. Sorry about that, Chris. I guess it's just uh, ain't going to work for me tonight. I'll try next week. Um, well, sometimes you can just get out of it and come right back in, and sometimes it helps. It's kind of like on a regular PC, right? Um,
Uh, Daniel, you said, I agree with you, Chris. I like your work. I can't think of a whole lot that I would disagree with you on. And in, in, in that minute, I get up here. He's the leader, like I said. I like your work, and I hope uh, you keep doing it. Oh, yeah, absolutely, Daniel. Um, the only reason why I would stop doing anything like this is, A, you know, if something health came up, there was a problem, or I'm just working so darn much. Uh, like I had some friends with doing this before, and because they – literally work got in the way to the point where, you know, life gets in the way, you know, uh, you got to do your thing, you know, rocking and rolling. So if that was happening, that's the only reason why other than that, no, nah, we'll keep rocking this. He's, he's definitely not going to stop me. I've had other channels try to stop me. He ain't, ain't going to do it. That's for damn sure. You're my favorite and Jimmy Roberts is too, Daniel, you said. Uh, absolutely. You know, Jimmy does great work. SC says, hi, Miss Heard. Hello. Kenneth Lair. Hi there. What's going on, Kenneth? Good to see you in there. Chris's live stream comments and replies to him lagging way behind. Huh. Well, you got to keep in mind, uh, Miss Heard, I'm actually going way, way up because I'm trying to catch everybody's comment. Uh, sometimes I get blasted, man. Somebody goes, oh, you didn't see my comment. I asked you this. And I'm like, I'm sorry, man. I'm, I'm really trying not to miss anybody if I can. Because I can go like this right now to the most recent one, Paul Silver put. Keep... Uh, Keep up doing what you're doing, Chris. Uh, best, Chris. Uh, well, I appreciate that, Paulo. So, uh, James Gregan, as I said already, Chris, uh, fair play to, uh, to you uh, for speaking well about Alien Hunt a few times in a few hangouts. I call it how I see it, man. You know, people are doing good work. Why not share the st same stuff that we're basically doing on this channel? You know, it's like you guys. It's like, well, see, I'm into electric vehicles. I own them myself, all right? So I, I go on these channels. Now, if I see another one that's doing the same thing, like the electric bills, like a lot of people do electric car conversions and stuff like that. I see another one that's suggested for me. I'm going to jump on that. Well, why not do the same thing? Why not pass, pass along some links that you guys enjoy the work that you're seeing here? You can also see good work over his channel. Why not? Why is it? What's the hominid, right? That's the way I look at it. Oh, Jeff, you did? I'm sorry about that, man. I'm going to have to go back and check it out. If you can, if you don't mind, just send them again, please. Uh, you said I, you sent them pictures a month or so ago. Oof. Uh, maybe I did and just had them. I have to check. I don't even know what the pictures were. I'd have to check on my computer. Um, I back everything up on my hard drive in case the thing should crash. I got all my information on an external hard drive. Um, and, you know, because these things going to happen. Computers are computers, man. Uh, I've got two of them sitting here. I got one. Basically, that one there was my main one on the right side of me right now, which I'm watching myself and all the other comments, making sure it's not going bad or anything. Everything's on the um, audio and video still working. Um, but now this is my, my, uh, main one that I use now. I think he talks about it in a few lectures. I watched it on here a few months ago. Jason McVeigh, you put more power to you, Chris. I appreciate it. Shimaz has some good lectures too. He passed away, sadly. Elohim Deleth, uh, good day too. I do, Shep. He's got some good stuff there, right? What do you think about that when he takes, he buys these, what do you call them, the eBay, the eBay uh, the Tesla? <laughs> he does really good work. I love his work. Um, I actually, he's one of my main channels I watch. Uh, he's good stuff. He's, a, he's, a, he's funny as shit, too. <laughs> uh, like Phil and Alien uh, are doing great work on their channels, too. Absolutely, Paulo, yeah. Uh, not just Alien Hunter, a lot of others as well. Smash them like buttons and share. Bang, bang. Shoot them up. Uh, Doom Punk, yeah, you put it on my wife. Uh, uh, my wife purchased a hybrid car several years ago, but I still like hot rods. Oh, I'm the same way, man. You still have that urge, man. You still have that. You just want to feel that power underneath your underneath your foot, man. There's nothing nothing better than a nice V8 rumbling underneath you with a three-quarter cam, right? And there's some nice three-inch pipes out the back. Um, uh, like a, my, my brother and I, um, I checked out what he was, he was actually in the service in, uh, in Myrtle beach. He's in the air force and, uh, he had built his, uh, 71 Monte Carlo 454 big block, um, just raw horsepower nothing on the bottle and, um, awesome stuff. Right now me, I got a fully electric car and I've got a hybrid. Um, it just, I enjoy now. I mean, like I had all the toys. I had a 79 Camaro 350 built mild, you know, mild build T tops, a fun car. Uh, I wouldn't mind having another one, but at this time, you know, you save a little money with the gas, you know, kind of sucks on your worst week. You get maybe 43 miles a gallon. 
you know, and then better weeks you get 50, 55 miles to the gallon. So yeah, it kind of sucks at the gas pump. Sarcasm, of course. Um, and the, the electric car I enjoy, it's just basically for kick around locally, you know? Digger. Hey, Chris, love your channel. I live in uh, West Virginia, close to Parkersburg. Yeah, you're still a good distance for me. Uh, um, I used to work for a company um, that uh, used to deliver medications, you know, to all of these other, um, you know, all of these, you know, assisted living places and stuff like that years ago. And uh, Parkersburg, I'd have to go up there every now and then. And that was a good drive for me. But, you know, it'd be like you had to do like go on a stat kind of thing, you know, like they needed it right away or whatever. But, uh, yeah, pretty cool. Shep, yeah, he said he's good and funny. Yeah, he is. And he's he's really good with his hands, man. He's, this guy is phenomenal. Um, and, uh, you know, the work he does on his cars, and I think he, I was trying to watch that other video. He just said uh, something about, uh, what was it? Um, I don't know, something like, uh, I don't know if it was the pros and cons or something like that of doing like a, a electric build. Um, but the photo, the, the, well, the photo, the, the photo rather, I was going to say the thumbnail and photo at the same time. The thumbnail showed like a, something that looked like smoke coming out of the front of the vehicle. It sounds kind of funny. Oh, cool. We got a 78 Camaro in the garage being restored. Nice. Nothing wrong with that. Richard Mortimer, the irony is an electric is uh, faster off the line due to tor direct torque conversion. Absolutely. See, mine's a little bit different. Mine's more of a, like a cheese box. I call it the, uh, uh, you know, the, it's, it's like a smaller car. Um, and it's software driven, which sucks, right? Um, I can modify it and give me a lot more takeoff off the line, but I don't want to prematurely break anything or anything like that. So, but, um, I love it. Gets me back, you know, point A to point B. Can't knock it. Saturn's Moon Titan was discussed a few weeks ago. The ramp areas, one of which appears to be a backwards seven. Uh, close look at this. It's a smoke trail from, from tech. Please look and zoom into that area. Elohim, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to check that out. Um, I'm almost positive I've seen something like that too. I'll have to check that out more. Uh, uh, James Craig and it's 135, uh, Cork city in Ireland. Now, Chris, just wondering what time it is with you checking the next checking for next week. Uh, man, it's right now it's 11. I'm, I'm sorry. 11. Yeah, I'll be all right. I'm looking at the other number here. Um, uh, eight So just look up, uh, 5 PM Eastern time and you'll, you'll be fine. And then you can see what the differential is with yours it's time, time wise. You seen was it uh, Saturn or was it Venus just got hit by a big meteor? No, I'm not sure. I'm I didn't hear that, uh, Troy. When was that announced? Was that just uh, recently, a couple days ago, maybe? Scott Gamble, don't hear GTOs mentioned much. I uh, had 265s. Ain't nothing wrong with a good goat, man. Good goat motor. Um, it was funny because I had a, uh, and of course it's off topic, guys, and I apologize, but uh, I just want to respond real quick. What was funny about it is I had a, what the hell was that thing? I don't know if you remember the old Cadillac Seville had that weird sloping trunk in the back. It was the windshield in the trunk. I'm sorry, not the wind, but the back window in the trunk. It was a Cadillac Seville, and it was the uh, Buick Century was like that. And it was a 70... I want to say 78. Well, a buddy of mine, uh, uh, Bill, we got together and we put this, uh, went down to the junkyard and got an engine and transmission for like 250 bucks, right? And uh, it was a 400 motor. Didn't realize it at first, you know? So I'm like, okay. So we throw it in there. And of course, we it didn't mate up to the uh, the frame. So we had to weld it all in and stuff like that. Um, so he says, oh man, I got it all back in. Everything's good. I said, all right. We start up and that thing just, the whole car would shake. I'm like, what the hell? So I decided to look at the uh, numbers on the block, right? It turns out it was a 69 uh, 400 engine, uh, had the, uh, four X heads on it. So it was a mile heads. And, uh, so it was 330 horse, 370 foot pounds of torque. That thing would run like a raped ape, ran good. Nothing wrong with a good goat motor.
smash on the bell and you get the notification. I have to get the notification. I have got get the notification so far. Yeah, when you guys subscribe, just hit the little bell on the side so you get notifications. Um, and just like live feeds, you get them automatically. You know what I mean? So if I go live, like I went about mm, 10 to 15 minutes early today, uh, which I'll be getting off real soon. Uh, and, you know, because I'm going to get some stuff done before I you know, hit the sheets. But um, the... Let me see here. What the hell? Oh, I just jumped a gun. God, I hate when that happens. Mm, sort of today, smash the bell. and you get, Okay. Uh, no, okay. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people, sometimes they say they don't get the notifications, but they you will get them if you hit the bell. And like I said, you guys know when typically I do videos anyway. I try to do at least two a week. And like I said, this Friday, I couldn't do it. Uh, cause like I said, a good friend of mine, my coworker, uh, his mom passed on and stuff like that. So Friday, that was the actual wake and funeral. And, uh, so, you know, I was there for him to help him out if I could. And, uh, so, you know, so that's why I didn't get that one out. I usually try to get him out on Thursday, but I was going to put it on Friday. And of course that came up. So, uh, the alien that was on the scar shaped craft on the moon that was saying he su uh, supposedly brought down to earth to look at its engine development had an Asian type alien in it. Oh, yeah, you're talking about the Mona Lisa, Rachel, right? The Mona Lisa, they called her. Um, I'm, see, that's that one is, to me, it's kind of like half and half. It's kind of bogus, but is it possible some of them? Because I've done one, it looked like a, in that area, it looked like a little cigar-shaped, you know, kind of craft. However, there wasn't enough detail in it to see it. Now, the way this video showed is like up close and all this other crap. But what's funny about it is you see the whole, they're, they're moving around the thing, like they're going like, it's like, what the hell is flying around it? You got a drone up there flying around this supposed craft? So I think part of it was bogus, um, but I think some of that stuff could be real. I don't know. Um, that I'm kind of on the fence about. Oop. Hey, you're right about that, Phil. Plenty of making a lot of power, but uh, motors didn't last very long. Yeah, they weren't exactly the best, but tell you what, when those things were working good, they, yeah, they were, they were the bomb. Um, Aditya Todd, a great, great question. What do you think happens after you, we, you know, we die? Is there something you personally believe? Um, you know, we're all energy. You know, I think we just go back out into the universe. Um, you know, we are, we're in this, this shell, so to speak. Uh, this is like our avatar. So yeah, basically we are energy. We are electrical impulses. That's what our body, you know, it's, our body is electrical. And I think we just go right back out into the universe as that. And, um, now some people believe, I believe we have creators, not creator. Um, now, whether we came here at some point, we just, you know, from another planet, uh, you know, of course we evolved. You know, a lot of people don't believe in evolution. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about actually at this point, you know, we're still evolving, you know, and uh, scientists say at some point we're going to, you know, have, you know, like almost like alien features, like bigger eyes, bigger heads, you know, a lot more brain, so on and so forth. Not so sure about all of that, but as far as that, when we die, I think we do actually go out into the universe. And I think, you know, we're still, I'm going to use the term conscience, conscious, but uh, not in the way that we are today. Um, so I think, we, like I said, energy just goes right back to energy, right? Oh, no, I'm actually watching on... Uh, uh, Paulo De Silva, you put on the, I bet you're watching on top chat, LOL. No, I'm actually watching on live chat. I always do that. Live chat's the way to go, right? Uh, photography like magic. I watched it and it was fake. Trust me. It was fake. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, I, I was 50, 50 on it at first. I'm going, nah, that's, that's bull. Uh, Doc Chuck, little Chuck. Uh, hello from Louisville. Y'all what's going on, man? Good to see you in there, neighbor. William Rutledge took a, where did, he, where did it go? It just jumped up. Okay, there it is. Uh, took a picture of the ship from a distance. Then a French guy made a fake video after. Yeah, that's exactly. That's what I'm saying. They just, all of a sudden, they just kind of, uh, you know, if it, this is the way they do it. If one channel does something that looks, you know, like, wow, this looks like a spacecraft. Wait a minute. They got a ton of hits on that. Let me see if I can do that. And from what I understand, they did it out of clay, right? Um, they made it out of clay and did the, and they did a really good job on it, if that's what they did, right? And, uh, and then, of course, they took photos of, you know, they're going like this different angles, like it's turning, like, well, not, it's not turning, but they're circling around it. 
It's like, how do they do that? That's how you knew it was just kind of bogus, right? Uh, I don't know if they were trying to make it look like an Apollo mission craft for kind of like floating around it. I, I don't know. But to me, it's, yeah, it's not very convincing. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, Rachel, you may be very well, uh, well correct. I mean, as far as the the craft itself, I've seen other photos, but they were vague. In other words, you could see the craft, but it was down near that, I don't know if it was a mountainous area and it had a crater next to it. Um, and when you looked over to the front of it, you can see like it's from left to right in front of it. And it, there's like, it looked like structures all the way around it, but it wasn't as clear as that person did that looked super clear. I mean, like there's, it's like looking out your window and there it was. I mean, I, that part I didn't believe, you know. Kenneth Lair, appreciate the support, man. Don't forget to hit the like button, everyone. That's what he put. Uh, I, I definitely appreciate the support. Um, <laughs> Chef, I like that. Not afraid to go as long as uh, as it's not by pulling out my fingernails. Yeah, that would be bad. That would hurt a little bit, too. Put a little alcohol in there. That would suck. H or uh, take care, Chris. See you on the next live stream and looking forward to your next video. Take care, my friend. Cheers. Well, cheers right back at you, man. Again, guys, 5 p.m. Um, you know, next weekend. We're going to do that every weekend to help you guys out that are, um, like I said, across the big pond and stuff like that and on the, in Europe and all that other good stuff. So it'll help you guys out a little bit. Uh, Paul Bland. Hi, Chris. Have you looked into the two dust cloud moons orbiting Earth? Hmm. I'm not sure exactly what you're saying. Um, I know there is, we have two moons anyway. We have a moon we see all the time and there's one more that's on an elliptical. Um, that's way out compared to our moon we have. And it's, it's on its long elliptical and it's like this smaller moon. Uh, so I'm not sure two dust cloud moons or is that what you're saying? Uh, Paul, the other moon, the other moon we have. Uh, Phil Cox and daughter, Jessica, uh, you who 26 subs now, my girls will be buzzing. Um, yeah, Phil. Uh, well, okay. Yeah. You're getting, uh, get 26. Uh, yeah. Do me a favor, Phil, drop your link to your channel again. Um, yeah. I mean, even Phil is trying to do this. He's, he's making his own videos and stuff like that, which is awesome. Paul De Silva, Chris. Okay, mate. My window is a bit slow. Scott, LOL. <laughs> Uh, Troy Wojnowski, forgive me if I'm pronouncing your last name, Naples, Florida is in the house. Bend down there, man. Uh, every now and then we go to the, uh, uh, let me see, the Ritz-Carlton down there in Naples, me and uh, my buddy, uh, um, Billy. What the heck is that? Oh, okay. Um, uh, my buddy, Billy, uh, Carson, um, you know, from forbidden knowledge, we get on there, we'll, we'll go down there and every now and then eat there at the, uh, Ritz Carlton there. It's a nice area. Naples is beautiful down there. Not sure if the moon girl thing was real. The David at air story was on about, uh, was totally different story to the moon craft thing you guys were on about. I have seen that too. Just shape was similar. Exactly. It's, it's like, so everybody's kind of on the fence about that. You know what I mean? I believe some of that has got some truth to it. Um, and some of it is just totally bogus. You know, people are just trying to, you know, fire it up, you know, look at, look at it. Look at it. Infinity forever and beyond. Hi all from Australia. Better late than never. Yes. You know, although we'll be signing off very soon. Um, I appreciate your job dropping in. Yeah. Dropping, um, dropping in, but 5 p.m. Eastern time next week, Infinity Forever and Beyond. Uh, you can uh, so we can get on there a little earlier for you guys. Uh, not that it'll probably help you a whole lot because you're basically on the other side of the planet, right? Uh, as far as time zones wise, uh, but um, but that we're going to be moving it two hours earlier next week. Yeah, Troy. Yeah, it's been it's it is super nice. We try to go out to that if you've been there. You go through the lobby to your left, and of course, you can go out to that little restaurant there on that little uh, boardwalk. And of course, the, the water is beautiful. The beach is awesome down there. Then your website, the remote viewers that uh, the government believes is have, that the government believes is and have stated that the aliens on the moon look exactly like humans. And it could very well be. I mean, how do we know it hasn't been us? You know, here's the thing. Here's a crazy idea. Because like the Mayans claim we're in the fifth cycle. In other words, 
again, we've had ca uh, ca catastrophic things that happen as floods, fire, so on and so forth. And we're in the, we're in the fifth cycle right now. What if every time that we, um, every time that there was a cataclysm here on earth, whether it be, you know, some kind of ice age, whatever, and then we knew these things were coming. So in other words, we, we just, you know, through history and we decided to put a base long ago on the moon because maybe we were more advanced than we are now. Because think about this. The planet almost dies off, meaning almost all humans. Okay. Well, for whatever reason, we come back. Now we've already had the technology, but now we have to try to get it back again. So we, now we go and we build, we build, we build. Now we're up to where we are. And of course, then the, the population caves back in something else, catastrophic happens, so on and so forth. Right. And now we're up to the fifth cycle. How do we know we haven't been on the moon all this time? For thousands of years, we don't know that. But now every time we have these cycles, we come back, we come back. And uh, we have uh, better technology, although at least we think so. How do we know, right? Hatcher, man, I love the uh, last video you did with uh, Bill Carson. I'd love to see another one. Yeah, I actually went down there this this July, and uh, he was actually, I'm trying to remember if he was in the Carolinas at the time, so we couldn't hook up that time. Uh, I was going to do like another uh, kind of interview with him um, and, and feature him in one of my videos again. Uh, very knowledgeable. Um, if I can, I'm going to try to get him like a, even on a live chat type thing, and uh, we can do that or whatever. Um, he's very busy. He's bouncing everywhere. Uh, in fact, when I came back, he was up there in Ohio at the time. So yeah, he's, he's, he's bounces, bounces quite a bit. Oh, okay. Paul, you said, uh, I saw a, a post on another channel, uh, on these clouds that are orbiting our earth at the same distance as our earth. Our, I'm sorry, as our moon. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd have to check into that cause I'm not sure about that myself. I definitely have to look into that. Um, uh, misheard, Chris, do you have a PayPal donation link? I can just log into PayPal from my brother's device and PayPal and you know, donation. Yeah, I'll get, I'll get with you. Um, you know, I haven't really thought about using that, uh, cause I haven't done it in a long time, you know, to be truthful. Uh, I used to sell a lot on eBay and stuff like that, uh, all electronics and stuff. And, um, you know, but I haven't sold on there in a long time. So I'll have to see if I can remember what it is and I'll, I'll give it to you and maybe I'll use it next time for whatever, if it's easier for people, you know? But uh, thanks for asking. Uh, hopefully I'll watch a video about it today. Yeah, I'll have to check that out. You know, uh, Paul, do you have a, a link to that? Because I'd like to check that out myself. One fifty a.m. here. Uh, that's pretty late. Hmm. Let me see here. Let me see. Just checking something here real quick, guys. Do 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 do. Oop. Well, he wasn't live, but he was definitely in there. Pete, he wasn't, I don't see him live there, but I guess he was just, it was just a recording or whatever. So much uh, UFO footage lately, the, they're going to be, dro be dropping the whole UFOs are real here shortly, don't, don't you think? Oh, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's coming out, Troy. It's more and more and more it's coming out that these you know, UFOs. And here's the thing, you can't hide it from the public. You know, at one point you could, because remember like back in the sixties and so on and so forth that, you know, uh, these people wouldn't be able to do that. In other words, they would, um, where did I go? Kenneth, appreciate it, man. Appreciate the support. Don't forget to hit the like button, everyone. <laughs> Let me see here. Um, You see, this just jumped on me. So, yeah, I mean, like I said, back in the day, you, you would see like, 
you know, back in the day when people had, in, you know, in the sixties and maybe the seventies, people had these kind of crude cameras. Now everybody's got a camera on their phone and everything, man. It's like, you can't hide it much longer. At some point, you know, like the Pentagon came out with the videos about these, you know, jet fighters following these things or this thing that was twisting and turning and looked like it was morphing and everything else. Yeah. So the whole thing is, is that these, um, you know, they can't hide it much longer. At some point, it's, something's got to give, right? What do you believe on, what do you believe on the moon missions never stopping and the United States supposedly had a moon base up there in 1979? I don't believe they did. I don't believe they stopped. Um, although it may have sounded like that, meaning the Apollo missions just ceased, uh, no more. And that's it. I don't believe they stopped. Um, here's a good example. They have, let's see if I can find this page. I had it up here somewhere. Um, no, that ain't it. That's not it. Let me see. This might be here. Like, here's a good example. You got many of you guys have probably heard about the X 37 B, which basically looks like a small, uh, space shuttle. Like we used to have the Challenger and all that other stuff. Um, you know, and that's on the news there. You can see the military uh, space plane's latest mystery mission hits 700 days. To be exact, it's 718 days. Now, you know, they're talking about how the it's the payload is kind of secretive. It's been a, I don't think this thing's just orbiting Earth. Although it's taking like this doing these tests and stuff like that. I don't think it's just you know orbiting Earth. I think it's doing something more than that. I think it may be actually taking off, going to the moon. Maybe not. It's pure speculation, but it's the same. It's a miniaturized, you know, basically a space shuttle and it just comes back in. There's nobody on board. it. It's completely autonomous. Um, and it just comes back and it lands like a regular plane, like the old shuttles used to do. Um, the robotic X 37 B launched in on its fifth and latest mission known as the orbital test vehicle or the OTV five on September 7th, and this was on this, uh, 2017 at the time, and the usable spacecraft, which looks like a miniature version of NASA's space shuttle, and has been zipping around our planet ever since. But keep in mind, this thing comes out four days ago, so they're talking about these, um, the stuff that it's actually doing. Let me get rid of that. There's basically, every time you go past a video, try to put it back in the other area. Um, and it's basically just explaining. It's, you know, each one of, you know, because they got more than one, I believe, but it's 29 feet long and 9.6 feet uh, tall with a wingspan of almost 15 feet uh, and a payload bay the size of a pickup truck bed like the space shuttle the x-37b launches vertically and lands on a runway like a plane so they're still trying to figure out what this thing's doing up there of course nobody's going to say anything um, and i don't know if you guys have seen this two plants orbiting tea gardens they call it tea gardens after this guy that discovered them a star described as the most Earth-like found yet. Um, if you guys, anybody you guys are interested, you want to see this right after the, uh, you want to check it out right after the live stream, you can do that. Right there. You can check that out. Um, like I said, Daniel, I don't think it stopped. You know, they could have easily just kept using these these other, um, I think uh, I think one of them, they're, they're, these shuttles are literally rotting away. I think uh, a couple of them in Kakistan, Kakistan uh, where they're in this big building and it's just rotting away. Um, it's sad to see stuff like that, but I believe they could have been just easily re repurposed. It can go out into space. The astronauts were in it. They can go out into space. They built the space station. Why can't they just fly to the moon? What's stopping them? It's space. So use enough uh, rocket. Shh, you get in a tra trajectory you want to. You get to the moon. You land on a platform there, like a runway. Take right back off. It'd be easy to do it. There's hardly any uh, gravitational pull at all, right? There you go. Come right back to Earth, fly right back into its atmosphere. There you go. So, yeah. And yeah. So I don't believe they stopped. They might have told the public that the Apollo mission stopped, but that doesn't mean anything. Odds and crafts, sending love from the UK. I appreciate that. Uh, right back at you, right? Nacho Libre, 253 here. Yeah, it's pretty late, man. We're going to be signing off anyway. There's also a cosmic war th uh, theory stating that the Earth, Mars, and most moons had an established civilization. A war occurred that destroyed a planet where the current asteroid belt is now. Exactly. And uh, yeah, I mean, I believe that too. I believe, I, I, listen guys, I believe there's life in every dawn planet or pretty close to it in our solar system. Again, let's go back thousands of years. Were we in the Goldilocks zone, meaning Earth? Was it... Um, 
you know, was it uh, in there or was it, you know, like Mars? Was it in the Goldilocks zone or was it less? You know what I mean? In other words, if it was, you know, it could go either way of Earth. So how do we know? If you're talking about hundreds of thousands of years ago when the moon, I mean moon, but the sun was actually different, um, you know, because they're saying even now it's supposed to, you know, over millions of years, it's supposed to actually, you know, basically swallow, it's supposed to grow and swallow every planet in the solar system. So it becomes a supernova and they go burned itself out, right? Uh, so, yeah. Jason McVeigh, sharing is caring and I care. Obviously, uh, obvious you do too, Chris. Absolutely, man. That's what it's all about. <laughs> Kenneth, good one. About the moon man thing. Um, Please speak about the moon base from the 50s. Well, I mean, not sure about the 50s, but I mean, if it was the late 50s, early 60s, when... Um, you know, a lot of these missions were going, you know, they had like uh, different crafts going to, you know, Mars, Venus, uh, the moon, so on and so forth. They were doing this for years. So the things they seen on there, I think were, you know, phenomenal. And this is the reason why there's the big rush. Get there, get there. Let's do this. Um, and that's what it's all about. And I think that's the reason why, you know, these astronauts, when they seen what they seen, they were totally beside themselves and didn't know how to act when they were in that, uh, uh, that press conference. And, you know, I believe a lot of these things, I think they established a base way back in the day, or it was there much longer than we think. And we're just thinking it's been established lately, right? How do we know? But when you see these astronauts saying that, you know, they're talking about how they see these crafts lined up on a, uh, uh, on a side of a crater wall up on the crater, just looking right at them. That's bizarre. So you can imagine these guys probably crapped themselves a couple of times and it probably wasn't good. Um, and they come to, they're trying to come to grips with these things, you know, when they came back. Well, at least on Apollo 11, they did. And when they came back, they were just, you know, they just didn't know how to respond to that. So I think every other uh, Apollo mission after that, you know, they explained what they saw. So on and so it was easier when the next mission went up. And, of course, they were probably still. I can't even imagine if you've seen something huge sitting right in front of you. You're just kind of looking at it going, oh, my God. And it's nothing that we built or anybody on Earth has built. And this thing's sitting right there, whether it's structure craft, whatever it may be, these guys must have been blown away. And this is the reason why they reacted the way they acted, right? Uh, yeah, I don't think they stopped and Richard Branson's space team believed they, that as well. And well, you see the way his view is, there, right? Richard Branson, you've seen the way his views of uh, uh, aliens and stuff is, right? He believes it's, uh, it's the truth. <laughs> you're right about that photography. Like it must be a bit of a bum if you crap yourself in a spacesuit. Yeah, that could really be a bad day. That would be really bad. Yep. Anyway, guys, I want to jump on out of here. This has been awesome. I mean, it's been, I'm going to guess two hours and 15 minutes. Uh, well, pretty close Two two fourteen. It'll be two fifteen before you know it. Anyway, guys, I do thank you for being here. I appreciate all the support. You guys are awesome. Um, again, look for the video tomorrow, the Mars one I got coming up and I do have some moon ones coming up as well. So, you know, uh, check it out, check out, uh, alien hunters page as well. Um, as well as Phil's page. I don't know if he's left a link here, Phil, if you can, uh, Leave the link to your page there as well, because I know you're doing some work on that. I think it's the moon as well, aren't you? If I remember correctly, I could be wrong. Let's see. Phil Cox, if you can, drop a quick link to yours. I'm going to go ahead and uh, throw the link down so everybody else can check out anything you're doing there. Um, like I said, you know, I love anybody that's doing the same stuff along the lines that I'm doing and because uh, everybody's hungry for that kind of stuff. So I believe in sharing that and uh, getting the good channels out and stuff like that. Yeah, you're right about that, uh, Richard. Uh, and they got the riot act uh, read to them. Uh, threats not to say anything, et cetera, why I'm waiting. 
what I'm waiting for is the secret stash to be released by the astronaut will, you know, well, a moral, with a moral uh, conscience like uh, Edgar Mitchell. Yeah, it's a shame what, what happened to him, though, being, being that he's passed on and stuff. But he shared some information. But if you know, he's, he's very, yeah, he's like the way he went about answering and talking about certain things. He kind of, but then he started coming out with it more and more, if you remember, right? Hey, Chor. Uh, good night, Chris. Cheers. Cheers right back at you, man. Thanks, everyone, for showing up and being here and commenting and asking questions. And uh, I love uh, interacting with you guys. Uh, you're right, guys. Yeah, slam that uh, like button and love that button. Yeah. Boom. Um, I have a 51 and moon. And... Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Chris. Good stuff. Debbie 2000 says, thank you, Debbie. I appreciate that. Nacho Libre. Good seeing you there, man. Everybody have yourselves a good night. Uh, you guys are awesome. We're gonna, Like I said, again, 5 o'clock. Just check it out when you guys can. Next week, 5 p.m. Eastern time. We're going to rock this a little bit for you guys. And like I said, video coming out tomorrow as well. I'm going to try to get it like at least one or two more out in this week coming up. So uh, this way I can show you guys a little bit more love there. Anyway, guys, have yourselves a good night. Peace to everybody. And have yourself a great week coming up. We'll see you soon.